for the AUC between the Clark Atlanta Panthers and the Morehouse College Maroon Tigers. Hello everyone, I'm Kamari Darrington along with Sam Crenshaw and Sam of course, final game of the season for both of these teams. They would love to end their season with a victory. Especially Morehouse Maroon Tigers. They're looking for that first victory. They're hoping they can do it today. It would be a great thing to kind of spoil things for Clark Atlanta and let them to lift their heads up uh, winning that game. because They see these guys every day going to class. All right, well, let's take a look at the impact players for both sides, and let's start with Clark Atlanta. Daquan Kinsey, one of the uh, best running backs, of course, in the SIAC, and Terrence Harris is an outstanding defensive player. Kinsey, Kinsey coming off a big game recently. You're going to want to get a great effort from him today to give Clark Atlanta a chance for a win against Morehouse. All right, for Morehouse, Chloe Fleming, of course, a big target on the tight end position, and Dante Simpson, 19 tackles in the last two games. He has been the hit man for this Morehouse team, and watch for Fleming to go with Morehouse getting their starting quarterback back in action for this big game today. Time now to get set for kickoff. Clark Atlanta trying to finish 4-6 and six on the season. Their head coach is Willie Slater in his first season with the Panthers, three and six record there. Of course, spent well, 16 what, seasons at Clark Atlanta. We 16, well, 16 seasons at Tuskegee before Tuskegee, coming, they're coming to Clark Atlanta. And you have to wonder, these campuses are so close together. I'm sure they walked to this game. I don't think they found <laughs> up a bus. <laughs> right. to go, and that's what makes this game such a big deal. I mean, you you you, you, have, you, you got uh, people right across the street. You take classes uh, together, depending on what your major is, the subject matter. So these guys know each other very well. They, and, Oh, sorry. And uh, obviously, both schools have great traditions, have a lot of great alumni, and should be a fantastic game uh, for both of these teams and uh, for a lot of uh, history of both of these campuses. Absolutely. The, the bragging rights when you talk about W.E.B. Du Bois having been uh, at, at Atlanta University and Clark Atlanta, Benjamin E. Mays, obviously a legendary mentor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, for the lo longtime president there at Morehouse. So you get a look at the Clark Atlanta band. Um, you know, it, yeah, it, it's it, it, the history and the people who've gone there down through the years from, from Spike Lee to Edward Moses to Samuel L. Jackson, you know, they've all lived this experience. They walked this walk uh, here in Atlanta University Center. So it, it makes it uh, something so very special. It's the last game of the year. You know, you, that's the last chance you get a dig in at, at your, at your uh, guys at the other school, but also for the alums as well. It's the last time. They do a lot of going back and forth uh, because they really do support each other. Uh, when you think about the, the alums of the school, I know I've known alums forever who are maybe Morehouse graduates, but if Clark Atlanta's are playing the game, they may go and support Clark Atlanta and vice versa. So uh, it, it's really a family affair, a rivalry. They're going to put some of that friendliness on hold here for, for, for four quarters and, and see who gets the, the bragging rights for a year. I can just imagine what the classes were like this week with the players <laughs> getting together. And, uh, you know, it's kind of well, in a game like this uh, where you have two schools that are right next literally right next to each other mm -hmm. and and of course for Clark Atlanta they would love to, to be the team that puts the 10 in 0 and 10 or for Morehouse Absolutely. what is Morehouse what is Morehouse thinking about today in terms of playing their best game of the season well the best game of the season they hope they can pull it together they've had a lot of injuries I mean uh, you, you know and, and talking with coach Rich Freeman he said just from the, the outset of this season just you know, injuries have really beset his team they played a very challenging schedule uh, remember they played a team from the MEAC they played Howard up in up in New Jersey uh, so this team you know it, it's a nice schedule it sounds nice let's go to New Jersey and play Howard nice <laughs> right. crowd's going to show up we take the band and we go down to Broadway and do all those things that, that oh, was nice yes and then the games took place right and that was a, that was a different thing so going back to that um, you know, just getting everybody healthy. He told us the Albany State game that 23 players, 23 players that wow. would normally be able to play uh, weren't weren't uh, weren't healthy enough to go out and play. Uh, he is excited today because he is due to get quarterback Derek West back. He's a, he's a big factor for this team. He's healthy, ready to go. And for Clark Atlanta, obviously, season may not have gone as way, the way that they have wanted to, but this is a team that, that suffered some winless seasons over the last couple of years. So for Willie Slater, I think, coming to Clark Atlanta, obviously he's very, he was very excited about going to Clark Atlanta. How do you think – his first year has gone so far with the Panthers. I think it's gone very well. I remember talking with Coach Slater back on Media Day, and he talked about how excited he was about coming to Atlanta and the, the, the resources and the things that he found already in place. And you talk about a guy who's been at a place at Tuskegee, you know, 16 years and uh, winning seven SIAC championships and, and coaching so many all-conference performers down through his years at Tuskegee. Now he's coming to, uh, to Clark Atlanta. He was excited about being in Atlanta. He felt like it's an easy place to recruit players to come to. 
um, and, and he felt like he was getting adequate support uh, from the new president there, George French, who was the former president at Miles, who was familiar with the SIAC and the conference. So he'd come in and want to make a, you know, mandate it. Let's, let's, let's uh, do well with our athletics. We want to be winners. We want to be champions. Uh, they've gotten some support also to get some assistance. When a lot of people talk about, you know, uh, you know, resources for right. the players, you want to bring some good assistant coaches in, and uh, he's been able to do that. They they're three and six, three and five in the conference. Has some very close calls in some games. A heartbreaking loss to Tuskegee. You right. know, Coach Slater wanted that <laughs> yeah. so bad. Yeah. You know, he wanted that yes. so bad. Uh, but they lose that game in overtime, 45-42 uh, to Tuskegee. So you know, he saw his team go out and really fight. And I, and I think the fact that they played the way they have so far this season, uh, he sees bright things for the future. And, of course, these two coaches are very familiar with each other, have gone against each other so many times as uh, Clark Atlanta is ready to take the field. I think they were waiting to see who wanted to take the field first, <laughs> uh, trying to one-up each other in every little uh, facet. But uh, with these two coaches, that's just uh, what uh, what about their relationship and, and of course, the, the, the rivalry uh, over these last, over the over the long period of time that they've been coaching against each other. Well, you know, one of the big games that takes place with Morehouse each and every year is the game with Tuskegee. Right. So he's very familiar with Coach Slater, and they've had some, you know, in Tuskegee kind of dominated that series for yeah. a while. Morehouse would have their wins from time to time, uh, but yes, he's very familiar with them. And and while Slater is now at Clark Atlanta, a different school, he knows how a Willie Slater team plays right. that they're going to play hard and that, that that's what that's what he man says a lot of people comfortable over there <laughs> up on the tents and they're going to watch the game and hey look at the look at the plates over there my those goodness plates, i wonder what's on those plates probably probably whatever they are they're looking good because it looks like they're really <laughs> eating them up here as uh, we get set for kickoff and of course for morehouse uh, not just their their last game of the season, but of course it's senior day. You know, a lot of a lot of the seniors playing their last game at BTRV Stadium. So certainly they did not uh, they probably didn't expect to be 0 9 in this spot. Well, of course, uh, a lot of players have been in and out of the lineup, and this is their last chance to really uh, get a win. And of course, it's against the rival, so uh, they would love to put a, put that one in their their win column. And this is it for a lot of them. When you think of when you're watching them now, you know you know having a word of prayer before they get started. As they take this uniform off today, it, it comes off. That's it, and you won't think of, you don't want to think about the finality of it. Yes. But 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 for a number of these players, they will not put a football uniform on again. They may go out and play, you know, in some different league or, or flag league or something. But it right. won't. It will not be this. Yes, and that's the thing that makes today special. Uh, a senior day. As you see the captains there in the middle of the field for the coin toss, and we'll see who ends up getting the the, the, um, the the first possession of the game. But that's the other thing you think about. Yeah, it's a rivalry. Yeah, these guys know each other, and they go back and forth, and let's see who gets the ball here. You can see what the, uh, what the white cap tells us. You know, touching uh, one yeah, thing. And I can't see who we saw Okay, there. okay. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Shot there. We'll find out here in just a second. But, uh, you know, also with, with these two teams, you know, it's kind of interesting. you got – one of the worst offenses in the league in Morehouse, and then you got one of the worst defenses in the league in Clark Atlanta. So certainly when Morehouse has the ball, they would like to take more advantage. Clark Atlanta not much better offensively, but at least they, they average a few more points a game. But for Morehouse, for their offense, uh, what did they have to do to – Establish anything early on in the game. Well, you you, know, you got you, you got Derek West, and, and that's a, a good thing. And he can do things both through the air and running running the ball. He's one of the top rushers uh, on, for this team when healthy. He's been down since the Tuskegee game, so him coming back today will be big for Morehouse to give them their best chance for offensive success. Uh, if he can complete some passes, that's one thing. But you really want to come out and get that ground attack going. This has it's been running back by committee. Uh, Coach told us that he's had a lot of freshmen, some redshirt freshmen, some guys that weren't even supposed to travel have been have been forced into the fire to play for this team. Let's see if some of that experience pays off today now with your, your experience and, and more gifted quarterback uh, to get things started for Morehouse. But Clark Atlanta is going to get the ball first here to start this game. Yeah, it looks like uh, old body Baker will kick off for Morehouse. He does the kicking and the punting for the Maroon Tigers. And back deep for Clark Atlanta. Alvin Jones has returned most of the kicks for um, for Clark Atlanta this season, so uh, ready, finally ready to kick this thing off. It's uh, <laughs> it's been a long time coming for both of these teams, and the loser, of course, will never hear the end of it. Literally for the next 364 will not, days, will not. I'm telling you, it, it won't let it happen. <laughs> All is on the tee. 93rd edition of this game is a short kick. 
towards the far sideline. And running up the sideline with a lot of room. And out of bounds near Morehouse territory. So Clark Atlanta is going to have great field position to start the game. Off a, a short kick, try to try to uh, force uh, Clark Atlanta kind of try to throw him to sleep a little bit, but they were ready for it. Nice return there, 25. Zachary Becton uh, in on the stop for Morehouse. But as you said, a, a short kick, and Clark Atlanta's got good field position to start this first possession. Look, look at where they are already in Morehouse territory. They're going to start this at the at the Morehouse 45-yard line. And Street Brown is their starting quarterback. 809 passing yards on the season. Starts with two wide receivers. And Brown throws over the middle. Pass is complete. Inside the 25 and all the way down to the 18-yard line is Darren Stevens. Darren Stevens, his 28th reception of the season. The senior from Conyers, Georgia, first down, 4 o'clock Atlanta. And that's what you want to do. You want to get off to a good start. Watch just a quick hitter right there. Fakes the handoff. Nice completion. Going to move the chains, starting things off in this game. That's a great reception to get things started. Clark Atlanta. So Carlos Dunnabin in on the stop there, number zero, in on the stop for Morehouse. All right, so first down at the 18-yard line. That one good for 27 yards. Juan Kinsey in the backfield. And again, two wide receivers tied into the near side. And they'll hand it off to Kinsey and Kinsey. Gets down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line, so two plays in, and Clark Atlanta's in the red zone inside the 10. Darren Pittman in on the stop there for Morehouse on that play. And so far, everything positive for Clark Atlanta. I don't know if you could think for a better start to the football game for them to come out, get the completion, and now the run game. They, they're really balanced on offense. They're in the red zone right now, and let's see how they finish it. Good start for Clark Atlanta, certainly. At the start that Morehouse would like, already challenged offensively. They don't want to get down behind early on in this football game. And Brown to Kinsey in a nice play in the backfield. Dante Simpson, one of the men we talked about before the game, makes his first big stop of the game. Coming in, I mean, he rifled in there for that play. He's like he was shot out of a cannon. Watch for 27. Comes with a big solo stop. Big play for the Maroon Tigers. Lost a two on that play, but he's second down. And goal from the 11-yard line. Clock right now not operational. You can't see it on the clock right now. We do know it's just underway in the first five minutes of the first quarter. Two men in the backfield now with, with Brown. The wide receivers for the Panthers. Morris brings some pressure. Brown steps up. Trying to find some room, but he can't get there. Can't get out of the pocket, and he'll be sacked back at the 14-yard line. So, as the first two great plays for Clark and Atlanta, they're going the wrong way. Yep, defensive tackle Elijah Campbell in on the stop. Big fella, 6'2", 295. He's moving around, trying to see if he can get his way out. He's boxed in, and Rick 93 is going to come in and finish it off. Big play. So, the first sack of the game there. A loss of three, and now Clark and Atlanta will... Looks like they're going to bring the field goal unit out. And Claudio Quintanilla will come in. They will attempt a 31-yard field goal just inside the near hash. Trying to put Clark and Land on the board. And this kick is wide to the left. So nothing doing for Clark Atlanta. So they got a 27-yard pass play, a 9-yard run, but then they go backwards. And then Kentonia misses the kick, and Morehouse will have an opportunity now on offense. Got to be disappointing for Coach Slater and his staff to come out and get the ball first, move the ball downfield, and get into scoring position. And it just didn't happen for him. Got to be disappointed. But now Morehouse goes out. Let's see what they can do. Offense has been the problem for Morehouse this season. Curious to see how they come out and what things they try to do to move the ball downfield. So Derek West is the quarterback for the Maroon Tigers, junior from Long Beach, California. Finally back in the lineup. He's a left-hander, and he's got four receivers out. And this handoff to the left side, that's Ernest Davis. And Davis gets out to the 27-yard line, so a nice gain on first down for, Clark, for Morehouse. 
And uh, over there, Andrew Bloodsaw, the sophomore from Newmarket, Alabama, along with others as well. And we're looking for Wes. Actually, we're seeing 19, a quarterback. That's Kamar Car Carlisle. Carlisle. Uh, who have been playing more recently. We'll see if West does come into the game, but here's the quarterback that has been thrown in and had to grow up in a hurry. On second down, there's Carlisle trying to run it, cuts back inside and gets out to the 29. It'll be about a yard short of the first down. So it'll be third in the yard for the Maroon Tigers. Carlisle, freshman from Atlanta Sterile High School, supposed to be red-shirted this year. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here you are playing against the, the cross-campus rival. On third down, they give it to Davis, and Davis is able to squirt forward. Cameron Ivory on the stop, but just enough for the first down for the Maroon Tigers. And on a day like today, maybe that's what it takes. It may not look pretty, but is it effective? Right. And that's what you're looking for, the offense, if you if the Morehouse Tigers coach. Rich Friedman just want to see them go out and, and execute some, have some success early in the game. That will make a big difference for this team. We're in the first quarter. Carlisle now looking. Four wide receivers coming left side. That ball was tipped in the air and incomplete. Looking for a broken quarter on the near side. A nice play by Zion. Now, no, forty-one. With, with a, with a hand up there, Xavier, uh, Xavier uh, Hopkins, forty-one, got a hand up and deflected that pass. I believe. Take another look at it here. Throws it out there. Yep, forty-one gets a hand up on that thing. That's why you practice that tip drill. <laughs> exactly. Xavier Hopkins, nice play for him. On second down, they go back to the ground game with Davis, and Davis, not much running room there. Well, you got a host of white jerseys right there. Everybody's going to the football. Coach Slater loves to see that. Everybody get around that football. So now we've got third and long, third and nine. We'll have to get it to the 41 for a first down. Four wide outs for the Maroon Tigers. Davis in the backfield. Carlisle rolls to his right, gets it away, gets popped, but the pass is caught. And fumble. It was given up by Marquez Pride, and Clark Atlanta falls on it at the 40-yard line, and that is not what Morehouse needs here. They almost had a first down on a play, but instead they turn it over, and Clark Atlanta gets it once again in Morehouse territory. And that is just unfortunate because, of, you know, first of all, your quarterback you know, and Carlisle takes a wicked shot as he turns loose his football. Watch. 19 rolls to his right and just gets, boy, tattooed right there. Wow. But Pride makes the catch, turns to make a move, and the ball comes out. And so Clark Atlanta goes back on offense. So Brown back out with the Clark Atlanta offense thing. Had, had a good had a good start, but missed, ended up with a missed field goal. But they start once again in Morehouse territory on this first down at the 40. And Brown looks to throw, standing up, steps up, going deep. Down the near sideline, knocked away at the last second. What a nice play. That's Cameron's. Uh, Cameron Selders, Selders, the sophomore from Savannah, Georgia. Nice job there at the last second. Looked like it was headed out of bounds. But a, a nice play there. It's going to be second down. Solo coverage there, and Selders goes up there and knocks that ball out of bounds. Makes sure there's no reception. Great defensive play. David Martin was the intended target for Brown on that first down. First and ten, so will be second down at the 40. Second straight possession for Morehouse starting in plus territory. They don't want to squander this opportunity. Three wide outs. Can't see in the backfield. And he's going to get the handoff. He tries to go to the left side, turns the corner, and knocked out of bounds by Simpson at the 36. It's going to make it third and six for the Panthers. Just trying to get something going to that left, off the left side of that line for Clark Atlanta. Picks up some yardage, but still got third down now. And it's not the two best off, two of the best, better offenses in the league, but obviously for Clark Atlanta, I would love to pick up a first down and keep the, keep the ball. Can't see in the backfield. With Brown, third and six, got to get to the 30-yard line. Four wideouts for the Panthers. Morehouse shows blitz. They back away. Brown over the middle. Pass is caught in traffic. What a nice catch down to the 20-yard line. 
A catch made by Devin McCoy. The top receivers on the team is 23rd catch of the year. First down for the Man for the Panthers. He threw it right in there in between some defenders. Very nice catch by McCoy. Got 14 to Darian Lemon in on the stop for Morehouse. First down. All in out of the 20-yard line, so a 16-yard pickup on that play. So another first down. And Morehouse trying to once again keep them out of the end zone. Once again, Morehouse getting to the red zone. Two receivers to the near side, Stevens and Martin. And we've got flags. Looks like it's going to be a false start against Clark Atlanta. Mm. Everything has been going positive for Clark Atlanta on offense. They missed the, the, the field goal attempt, but they've been moving forward, gaining yardage. And now the penalty flag comes out. Those kind of penalties that will drive coaches crazy. Because oh, yeah. Because you've been moving the ball a little bit. And then a mistake there, pre-snap penalty. So, Clark Atlanta will try to regroup first and 15 now for the Panthers. It's the bane of every coach's existence, <laughs> the pre-snap penalty. Hate them. A lot of coaches don't like that. Tyler Price, the fullback. And we've got a More big movement. hit. That should be a free play. Well, they're going to stop a play here. And uh, John here. And, uh, yeah, they had some conversations what about class. <laughs> about class last week, you know. You're supposed to help me with that science project uh, to do on Monday. <laughs> As part of the motion, uh, you know, and you're going to see some of that. And in a game like this, there we go. But did, but did, was he lured offside? And I think that's what we want to see. That's the question there. It's like the lineman 71 may have made a, made a move, a counter flinch. And we'll see. First of all, <laughs> all the officials on the <laughs> counter on the field. Um, yeah, and they, they got to do that. You know, officiating crew, you got to establish some things early. Here we go. So they can get those yards back. So all of them back to the 20 yard line. Look at the five yards back. Dorian Black and Elijah Campbell there in, the, in that middle for Morehouse. Two big bulls there trying to go up against this offensive line for Clark Atlanta. Once again in the eye. And they'll hand it off to Tyler Price. And Price, again, not much room to operate. We'll take it down to about the 19-yard line. Yeah, not much doing that time. Morehouse defense was ready for that one. They stacked things up. Maybe he maybe got one. I don't know. Maybe get one. You give yeah, him one on yeah, that we'll one? We'll give him one on okay. that one. Okay, all right. <laughs> Tyler Price is a graduate student from Montgomery, Alabama. I actually went to North Alabama, University of North Alabama before making his way to Clark Atlanta, played at Catholic High School there, Catholic Presbyterian School there in Montgomery. Now back to the one-back set. This is second and nine, trying to get to the 10-yard line. Can't see in the backfield with Brown. And they will hand it off to Kinsey, and Kinsey wrapped up and able to fall forward. Broke a, broke a tackle there. Down to the 15, and again, some extra. Folks still moving after the whistle. Roughness, roughness there after they get to the play. <laughs> that was some determined running. Yeah, it broke away from one defender and leaned forward and picked up more, but still you got a sizable third down play coming up here. About third and five down to the 15-yard line. Clark Atlanta, second possession, and last one ended the 31-yard missed field goal by Quintanilla. An offset eye here this time. Well, showing blitz from the corner, and Brown going to lop it for the end zone. That's too far for everybody. No one was going to get to that one. He tried to hit McCoy, but again, it's going to be fourth down. It's going to be an interesting decision here for Slater. No, he says... Bring the, bring the field goal unit out again. He's he's unhappy. You know, Slater usually pretty he's not cool, happy. collected he, on the sideline. He not just that ripped time. that headset off. He's not – coach is not happy. He knows his team is missing out on some opportunities early in the game. So we'll see if Quintanilla can knock this one through. This is from the other hash mark, a 32-yard attempt. Snap is down, kick on the way, and let's see. He pushed it to the left again. He did, so 
a pair of missed field goals to the left. And Warhouse will once again have the football. All right, we'll take a break. Morehouse gets the football back. Coming up here, still in the first quarter between Clark Inland and Morehouse. Sam, the HBCU sports community lost an icon uh, this past week, Eric Moore, uh, passing away, the, the founder of Anidian, uh, bravest of the godfather of HBCU, HBCU sports information. And, of course, you're very familiar with him and his career. Absolutely. And our, our condolences go out to, to his family uh, up in the Fayetteville, North Carolina area. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he started back in the 90s, and Honor Dan is as a, as a place to find your information for HBCU athletics. And there's a lot more coverage of HBCU at Lex with the new media out now. And so he's certainly a big part of, of that. Getting jump started as we get back to live action. And an eight-yard run for Ernest Davis on first down for Morehouse as they try to finally put some points on the board. Somebody has put some points on the board. I believe we're still in the first quarter. Here from BT Harvey Stadium. And that handoff to Davis. And, oh, he was hogtied down that time. Four. Able to squirt forward. And, we, well, we, we ain't got yeah, him. Hell, a helmet come off as well out there, <laughs> you know. Like Jalen Parham had a whole lot of the small body of Ernest Davis. is only 5'10 <laughs> and 210 pounds. <laughs> and speaking of Charlotte, North Carolina, Davis is from the Charlotte area. So. Yep, yep. Yeah, they got a penalty flag here. Let's see what the penalty flag is. Officials are convening. And um, let's see what the call is here. personal foul there against Clark Atlanta. Uh, maybe that has something to do with that helmet that came <laughs> right. off. And, boy, that's stepping one off here. And This is something else that helps Morehouse. When you get different field position like this, you can do some different things in your playbook. Let's see what they're able to do. So Morehouse picks up a first down on the penalty. So Davis lost a yard, but Morehouse gets 15 on the personal foul. So it's going to be first and 10. On the 42. Man in motion. And they'll give it to Davis. And Davis just tries to cut up field. Gets to the 43-yard line. So another yard for Davis. So he gets that yard back he lost in the previous play. Yep. Get that yard back. And like I said, you, you're almost to midfield here. And so in the first possession, you're moving 
You got a completion. The ball comes out. You got things going in the right direction here. Let's see what they do when they dial up for this second down play. Four wideouts for Morehouse. Davis in the backfield. Take a good look at the Morehouse sideline there. Carlisle looking to throw. Gets to the outside. Let's see if we'll try to run it. And Parham says, no, you're not going to run it. He does pick up a yard, though, as he was slung down. Parham, he likes to sling people down. Guess who watches a lot of wrestling on TV? Yeah, maybe he does, but he gets back there quickly, gets his hand on him. You're not going to get away. I got you, fella. Parham, freshman from Macon. He's uh, having some fun early on here in this football game. First quarter. From BT Harvey Stadium here in Atlanta, of course, they redid the track, the Edwin Moses track. And, of course, Sam, well, yeah, interesting story about Edwin Moses when he came to Morehouse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and, and Dr. Edwin Moses, as we know him, and has a pass as an incompletion there. If you look around this facility, uh, the, the turf, the, the scoreboard, uh, things you see from outside, also the track that's around the field was upgraded in the, in the preseason uh, since last year. Also, inside the locker room and weight rooms, all those things have been uh, upgraded for the Morehouse football program. But Edwin Moses, we talk about him being the Olympic legend, and for 10 years, uh, nobody could beat him in the 400-meter hurdles. When he came to Morehouse, there was no track. Right. There was no track. I don't know how no. you would recruit a kid, uh, uh, someone like Edwin Moses to come to your school if you don't have a track. All right, so the punt coming up here for Baker. And that one, a nice punt. Take it inside the 20, and – Making a couple of men miss and getting out to the 26-yard line. Looks like that's Alvin Jones. And Clark Atlanta really came for the block. They didn't get it. We'll take a break. Clark Atlanta gets the ball back at their own 25. Still scoreless here in Atlanta. Georgia Power, millions of Georgians depend on us to deliver clean, safe, reliable, and affordable energy. That's why we've invested nearly $10 billion to make the electric grid stronger and smarter and to improve service and reduce outages. By deploying high-tech self-healing networks, we can... All right, Clark Atlanta coming back out on the field. They've got a new quarterback. It's Daquan Vincent Nelson, six foot six, two twenty sophomore from out of James Island, South Carolina. They'll try to help Clark, Clark Atlanta move the football here. 
So they're making a change of pace here, Sam, after the first couple of possessions. Interesting to make a change of pace at, at this juncture of the game. Hasn't thrown the ball a lot. He'll hand it off uh, across the 30-yard line to K Kinsey. And another flag at the end of the play. And a, th a second flag flies in. We've had a lot of laundry early on. Yeah. So hold yeah. on on the uh, – picked up about six yards. But let's find out what's going on here with the penalty. We're starting to get some of that here in the back half of this first quarter. We were kind of clean in the first few possessions. And, and now for various reasons, we got some, we got some flags flying around. I don't know what the last flag, but he's got a pretty good arm. Maybe I know <laughs> these that teams can use him today. That one was sailing from way back there. Here's the call. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, that's a personal foul there against Clark Atlanta. So they're going backwards. And Coach Slater probably beside himself about that. I'll tell you, this uh, this is uh, not indicative of a lot of. Willie Slater coast teams, but you see early on, you know, Morehouse, you know, they're on now. They're just trying to find any kind of edge. And I think Clark Atlanta right now is kind of playing into it right now. If they can get under their skin and throw them off their game, uh, that's a part of it too. So it said the down counts on second down. A long way to go for Clark Atlanta to pick up this first down. Kinsey in the backfield with Vincent Nelson. He's got two receivers to the near side. And they'll try an option play, and uh, they'll take it out to the 20-yard line. So we'll give them the we'll give them the 20-yard line there. All right, third and long. That, 93. Elijah Campbell in on the stop. Uh, he has been active early in this game for Morehouse. So Vincent Nelson, the new quarterback for Clark Atlanta, I'm trying to pick up a first down, but they'll have to get all the way to the 35-yard line. So they gave him the 21, so got 14 yards to go. Three wide outs. Two back split between Vincent Nelson. And Vincent Nelson looking over the middle this time, and it's incomplete. Tried to hit Martin. Martin turned the wrong way. Otherwise, that pass was on the money. Yep. Yeah, well, he had to reach a little behind him and turn around. Yeah. It was, you know, but he was wide open. There was nobody there with him. Great route, and he was uh, in the clear. Boy, you want to deliver the ball in the right spot, and so your receiver can catch that one in stride. He had to reach back around and got a hand on it, and but wasn't able to pull it in. And now the ball goes back over to the Maroon Tigers. So Morehouse will get the football back. It's easy to see, Sam. There's two offenses that are not the best. <laughs> we got one that's one of the worst in the league, and uh, you can see that it's been difficult for both teams so far moving the ball. Clark Atlanta's in a little bit better, though, as Kittany's kick is blocked. Here we go. And it rolls into the end zone. Can Morehouse fall on it? Yes. Touchdown, Morehouse. So Morehouse gets it done on special teams. Donovan Parks. Parks, the sophomore from Santa Monica, California. I believe it was 46 that blocked it. No, Parks blocked it, and he ends up he ends up falling on it. So Parks gets the block and the and the touchdown, so he gets the the double there, and Morehouse gets on the scoreboard. I don't know how many times Morehouse has been ahead in games, but there they are, six to nothing in favor of the Panthers. And you know what? When, you, uh, when times, your offense is say. having trouble, your offense is having trouble sustaining drives and getting points on the board. And that point after is good. You'll Seven. take it on special teams. If that's the way you get them, you take them. Let's take a break. 7 nothing in favor of Morehouse. Donovan Parks, the block punt, and the return in the end zone for the Maroon Tigers. We're coming back to Atlanta in just a moment. Trophies, awards, medals. They show your hard work paid off. In the game of life, there are also trophies. They look like an organized financial plan to pay for your college, maybe even graduate school. Buying a house is a trophy. Starting your own business, that's a championship trophy. To help students gain the financial savvy to succeed at life, UBS has teamed with Everflow, the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, to create Elevate. Elevate delivers personalized financial training, access 
access to wellness workshops and career development programs, all for free and designed exclusively for SIAC communities. Financial freedom, that's the ultimate trade for you. Get started today at UBS.com forward slash element. When you're part of something bigger than yourself, it feels like all you ever do is win, win, win. And when that something is an HBCU, you know you can't help but win, win, win. So, as proud supporters of HBCU programs, we just can't lose. At Georgia Power, millions of Georgians depend on us to deliver clean, safe, reliable, and affordable energy. That's why we've invested nearly $10 billion to make the electric grid stronger and smarter and to improve service and reduce outages. By deploying high-tech self-healing networks, we can find problems quickly, reroute power, and keep Georgians connected. We're committed to making critical investments to meet our customers' needs today and for decades to come. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. recovery in the end zone after the block punt. 7 nothing in favor of Morehouse on top of Clark Atlanta. Kamari Darrington along with Sam Crenshaw and Sam in this first quarter has, uh, was really dominated I guess statistically by Clark Atlanta but here's the score. 7 nothing in favor of Morehouse. Like I said, if you're Morehouse and your offense has had trouble finding the end zone you take them any way you can get them. 7 nothing is what the scoreboard says. Alright, so Baker kicks off. Jones has it at the eleven. And Jones breaks it to the outside, has some room and some blockers, and he's knocked out of bounds near the 40-yard line. So, again, decent field position for Clark Atlanta. But uh, same they started two drives inside of Morehouse territory, and they still have zero on the board. They really do. We've seen them go through a quarterback change now, and we'll see which quarterback comes out to start this possession. We've, You know, we've seen a change in the last time. We saw Vincent Brown, and we saw uh, Vincent Nelson. We say Sharif Brown to start the game. Looks like it's still going to be Vincent Nelson out there. Price and Kinsey in the backfield along with him on this first and 10. From the 37. Brown looking to throw, steps up, clean pocket, throws too high. For the big, tall receiver, Devin McCoy, <laughs> it's a little too high. The 6'6 grad student from Charleston, South Carolina. Need to be 6'9 or 6'10 on that one. Yeah, <laughs> trying, to, trying to cover him there on that play. The Darian Lyman, he's 6'200. He needs a stepladder. <laughs> trying to get up there with that big fella, but he was there uh, to provide the coverage for Morehouse. Well, that is the end of the first quarter. So, Morehouse, 7 nothing in favor of the Maroon Tigers over Clark Atlanta. Second quarter action coming up next.
second game of the second quarter here at BT Harvey Stadium. Let's take a look at the crowd here. The Morehouse fans enjoying the city so far. As Clark Atlanta ready to kick off the second quarter with a second and ten. And Vincent Nelson back in the game. He hands it off to Kinsey. And again, there's Simpson with the tackle. It's going to be third down here for the Panthers. Oh, he has been busy. And there you see the run. But who's there to put the stop on him? 27. He's having just a big game. He knows his team needs him to go out and do some great things defensively. He's off to a great start. Clark Atlanta trailing 7 nothing, Trying to get something started. Quentin Johnson was also in there on the stop for Morehouse on the last play. It's third and nine at the 38. Vincent Nelson under pressure. He tried to get away, but he was hit. And that pass was incomplete. Ronnie West was the intended target. And Vincent Nelson being helped off the, the field. And Ronald, be Davis, Ronald Davis, 29, just had a wide open shot. There's nobody there. Just came in. Nobody fucking comes in and puts a hit on the quarterback. Those are good days there when you get a free shot at someone's coming at you free and you're unable to step into the throw. So Clark Atlanta struggling on offense. We'll have to give it away to Morehouse, and they just gave up a, a block punt return for a touchdown. Let's see if we go for the block again. Do you dial it up again, especially here they come? Oh, almost got to that one. And end over end. It's going to take a Clark Atlanta bounce and – Roll away from Pride as it goes all the way down inside the 10. So he got some help there. By the roll is Jeffrey Abrils there to down it. So Morehouse will start this drive at the 8-yard line. Pride probably wants to have that one back. But as, uh, as Morehouse starts 92 yards away from the end zone. Yep, and we'll see how the offense does now. But, you know, you see what they're doing with special teams. They found a weakness. They found something they can exploit. They blocked one. Turn it into six points on a day when your offense is struggling. Let's see if your special teams can come up and do some good things for you. I like it, but now let's see if the offense can get rolling. Let's try to maintain a drive. Let's get a couple of first downs. Let's see if we can do it. They end up being a 54-yard punt after the, after the roll. Is Carlisle back out onto the field with Davis in the backfield. And then off goes the Davis, tries the middle, and takes it out to the 11-yard line again. A lot of running room. Parham up out of the pile again. Second down for Morehouse. And as you mentioned, you know, Jalen Parham has been quite busy. He's been putting on the hits. He's been chasing the quarterback. He's been stopping <laughs> the run. He is really selling out today to do whatever it takes the Panthers to get this last – because winning this last game of the season. Second and seven. Carlisle looking to put it up again. Left side. Oh, big hit there at the end. Two got two more outs, uh, two more outs, uh, offensive plays got hit. It's going to be third down. Carlisle's pass was off the mark. And you had your receiver there. You, you know, you, you throw it out there to the wrong side. He's not able to, to haul it in. Trying to connect with Ronnie Howard. So just like that, it's third down. And Clark and Lanny think we get this stop, we're going to get some decent field position. Now Carlisle steps up in the pocket, still looking over the middle. Flags are down. That pass was dropped by Corey Fleming, the Man, tight end, and he was wide him. open over the middle. And we talked about Fleming from the outset, at the top of the broadcast. He's one of the guys, and he was open, wide open. One of your, your senior, you're one of your veterans on this team, and just couldn't pull that one in. Senior from Clarksburg, Maryland, could not get to that one. So a quick three and out for Morehouse. Of course, they'll decline that penalty. It's going to be fourth down. So, Baker back to punt. And Elvin Jones will more likely be standing near midfield. So, Clark Atlanta might try to go after this punt. See if they can get one back. The snap was low, and Baker just got it off. And it bounces at the 40, and it will be picked up at the 41-yard line. Boy, that was close. You had a bad snap, and he barely got that thing away. And you were right. You said, were they looking for a special teams, thinking about the block? They're thinking about returning the favor. Morehouse leads it 7 to nothing. Clark Atlanta coming back on offense with Sharif Brown when you come back to BT Harvey Stadium. 
Trophies, awards, medals. They show your hard work paid off. In the game of life, there are also trophies. They look like an organized financial plan to pay for your college, maybe even graduate school. Buying a house is a trophy. Starting your own business, that's a championship trophy. To help students gain the financial savvy to succeed at life, UBS has teamed with Everflow and the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference to create Elevate. Elevate delivers personalized financial training, access to wellness workshops and career development programs, all for free and designed exclusively for SIAC communities. Financial freedom, that's the ultimate trophy. Get started today at UBS.com forward slash element. When you're part of something bigger than yourself, it feels like all you ever do is win, win, win. And when that something is an HBCU, HBCU programs, we just can't lose. At Georgia Power, millions of Georgians depend on us to deliver clean, safe, reliable, and affordable energy. That's why we've invested nearly $10 billion to make the electric grid stronger and smarter and to improve service and reduce outages. By deploying high-tech self-healing networks, we can find problems quickly, reroute power, and keep Georgians connected. We're committed to making critical investments to meet our customers' needs today and for decades to come. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. Rivalry that started all the way back in the year 1900. 94th, 93rd edition of this matchup between Clark Atlanta and Morehouse. 7 0 in favor of the Maroon Tigers as the Panthers now will start from the Morehouse 41. Brown's throw is complete, but immediately tackled by Selders was Ronnie West. Ronnie West going to get out there, going to turn around, look it all the way in, makes that catch. A short pickup, they'll give him the, what, the 37 or 36 yard line. So a short game will be second down and five. So this is the third time that Clark Atlanta has started in Morehouse territory, still scoreless. And uh, Sam, obviously, uh, this is a big possession, I think, for the Clark Atlanta offense. Absolutely. You, you want to go out and see if you can convert. And move forward, and like I said, you you want to sustain some drives. That that's the the big thing you want to do for both teams right now, uh, just to get something going, some consistency. And you're in the second quarter. You want to go in back into the locker room. You're going at halftime. You want to go in having done something, done something really good and something to build on for the second half. Let's see how they come out now. Breaking the huddle. That was a pretty long uh, <laughs> walk there for for Brown. I believe there was a penalty against Morehouse. So Clark Atlanta has first down there at the 21-yard line. Got some movement. And it'll be knocked back five yards. So you get 15 and you give back five. Man. Moving to that interior line. No coach wants to see that. Anybody gets unhappy when they see that happen. So it'll be first and 15, Clark Atlanta. This is kind of what happened the first two times they had the ball this deep in, in territory. They would they would gotten down inside the 10 on the first possession and just kept going back. And then the penalty on the second possession and two missed field goals, a blocked punt, and a 54-yard punt. Those have been the results of the possessions today for Clark Atlanta. We're in the second quarter. Apologize for the issue with the score bug. Just able to show you the. Score in the quarter. I guess that's the most important thing. <laughs> we'll uh, try to find out how much time is left. As that pass underneath is caught, a nice little bubble screen. Brandon Hinton makes the catch. He takes it all the way down 
inside the 10-yard line. That'll be a first down and goal for the Panthers. Great execution on the bubble screen to catch and watch him follow the blockers. So they get out there, nice for him, and he's going to kind of tightrope down that sideline, pick up some extra yards. Beautifully Great done. play. Beautifully done. Tyler Hunter on the stop. Nice block out there by Darren Stevens, one of the wide receivers. A couple of offensive linemen out there to block. So Clark and Landon now. First and goal at the nine-yard line. So 17 yards on that last play. Fourth completion for Brown. A little high snap. High the, snap. The, the Kinsey. snap. Yeah, Kinsey, yep. Able to get to it. Down to the six-yard line. Three yards for Daquan. And let's see what happens now. They're going to go with the direct snap here. They're going to keep him there. They try to finish off this drive. That may be what we see. Price trying to lead the way, as you see. Another tackle for Hunter. He's an outstanding defensive end for Morehouse. Kinsey takes another direct snap, follows Price inside the five, and takes it down to the four-yard line. And this might be what we see until he try to get the uh, ball here. Joel Gutman came in from the backside and had his hands on him, wasn't able to get him down to the ground, though. He got there quickly for Morehouse, and here we go again. So the third down, it's time third and goal. And Kinsey. Still in that quarterback. And Kinsey's going to throw the soft pile, lobs it into the end zone for McCoy. It's knocked away by Carlos Donovan, freshman from Cassetta, Georgia. And it'll be fourth down, and let's see if Clark Atlanta tries another field goal. On this fourth down. Donovan's right there. Stripe for strike. Gets that hand up there. Just enough. 6-2 versus 6-6. So he was able to get his hand up there. And was able to make the play. So now Clark Atlanta attempting its third field goal. Gets a near 0 for 2. And actually we got a, a new kicker. That's Fernando Lobo. Fernando Lobo will try his luck now from... 21 yards, and this one is good. So Lobo knocks it through from 21 yards, and Clark Atlanta finally gets on the scoreboard. Morehouse leading it 7-3. to three. This SIAC football broadcast presented by Georgia Power will come back in just a moment. He's got a 21-yard field goal from Fernando Lobo. Now trailing 7-3 against Morehouse at BTRV Stadium. Uh, 
renovated BTRV Stadium, a part of really the entire community that seems to be uh, revitalized. Really is with uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium just being about a block off campus. Uh, that whole uh, talking about West Atlanta things that are taking place. You got a Walmart over there. You got a Chick-fil-A a couple <laughs> of blocks away. A lot of things happened in that area. All right, Lobo's kick down inside the 10 yard line. And this is Pride. Pride cuts it back now, trying to reverse his field. And he's tackled at the 20 yard line. Nicely done that time. Yes, Rashad Myers, Myers um, from Warren, Georgia. There he is, 23. Said, all right, you come back my way. <laughs> We're going to put into all that running, all that dancing around, and a nice uh, solo stop there on special teams. So Morehouse will get it back. We'll start this drive at the 21. And Clark Atlanta got some points on the board, but, boy, they have, boy, they have a case of red zone fever today. <laughs> boy, they get down in the red zone and nothing goes their way. At least that time they were able to get, you know, with a second-place kicker for the day, they were able to get some points on the board. But look like we have a matter here. The officials discussing something here. Yeah. Are we going to get a call or not? So that's a personal foul on Morehouse. They'll help things out. Oh, well, on the on the Panthers. Clark Atlanta. The, yeah. yeah, Clark Atlanta. So that will help uh, Morehouse out, give them a little room to work in those, this offensive possession. And let's see how they respond to Clark Atlanta getting their first points of the game. So Morehouse, four-point lead. Now back on the attack with Carlisle. Davis on the to his left. Three wide receivers. And they'll hand it off to Davis. Davis, big hole up the middle. Across midfield. Davis bouncing off tacklers. Still going all the way down inside the 35-yard line. The biggest run of the game. One of the biggest plays of the day here in this 93rd battle of the AUC. Look at this. The things just open up up the middle, and he keeps on going. If it's not for number seven, Terrence Harris, who finally comes in there and brings him down, uh, he may still be running. <laughs> uh, great play. And Morehouse looking for something good to happen offensively. If they got it here, let's see how they continue. 29-yard run. Davis gets it again. And uh, they'll fall forward to the 34-yard line. So pick up a yard. 19, Logan Daniels in on the stop for Clark Atlanta. Got some momentum going here on offense for Morehouse. Let's see what they do to, to, to continue it. Was Ernest Davis last year splitting time with Frank Bailey Jr. That was a great one-two punch back there for Morehouse. Now Davis he missed a couple of this last few games, but back in the lineup now for for the Maroon Tigers and off to a decent start so far. The second down, Carlisle looking deep. Two guys are down there, and now he'll just have to try to tuck it and run. He gets out of a tackle. Gets inside the 30. He's still going. What a run by Carlisle. And I think they say he stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds. Near the 25-yard line. Boy, Boy watch him. Man. Watch him escape from 97 par. And Parm thought he had him. <laughs> oh, he got away that time. <laughs> and steps out of bounds. Carlisle just trying to make something out of nothing. He was able to use that long, tall body straight out of that tackle by Parm and then just Kind of maneuver his way towards the sideline. Wonder if uh, we got a penalty here against Morehouse. Looks like we may have one here. Let's see if we see we see what the call is. It's back near the 40, I think. So it looks like it might have been a hold. Well, Rich Freeman, the coach of Morehouse, talked about this young man and how he's had to grow up and mature. They thought about redshirting him. They've been forced to play him this season due to injuries, and here he is now. His team's got a 7-3 lead. Back to the 39-yard line. Here's Carlisle looking to throw over the middle. Has a man, and it's caught inside the 30-yard line. Ronnie Howard with the catch. Senior from Fairburn, Georgia. Yep, and Terrence Harris is there uh, to bring him right down, defending, but there's a nice pass. Receiver goes up and brings it in. Nice confidence builder for Kamar Carlisle. Well, good for 11. Carlisle looking for the play now. 
It's third and two, getting it into the 25. And we'll hand it off to Davis. Davis able to get to the first down at the 22-yard line. So Davis, he's found some running room here on this possession, Sam. Seeing some patience, seeing patience, you know, not in a hurry. Wait, 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 wait. There it is. You know, you, sometimes you have to have that patience just to wait for your hold to come. He got it. He picked it up. And the chains move. First down, Morehouse. Their best possession so far was the seven points game on a punt block for a t return for a touchdown. That pass complete to Pride. Marquis Pride, one of the top receivers on the team. And he had ideas to make a spin move and try to break away from that defender, but he lost his footing. Still a great pass-catch combination and ball moving forward once again for Morehouse. Davis in the backfield with Carlisle as they speed things up. They're at the eight-yard line. Here's Davis right side. Can he get out of the tackle? He does, but there are a host of Panthers there to clean it up. Rodney Lewis was over there. Again, Terrence Harris in the middle. I think that's 34, Javon Hunt, that got a paw on it there, but he wasn't able to pull him. Nope, that was Harris that couldn't pull him down. And then all those white jerseys come over there and stop his forward progress. Second and goal now. Morehouse again with that. Driving now inside the 10-yard line. And Carlisle keeps it himself, gets to the five, and it'll be dragged down near the three-yard line. So big third down coming up here for Morehouse. They try to get into the end zone. Got to make the right play. You got to execute here. You haven't been in this territory today. You know, this is the first time you had a, a drive that's got you down this far. And now you're seeing Carlisle come to the sideline. And let's see if we're going to do maybe some direct snap. Do we have a change of quarterback? Let's take a look here. This is Jalen West. And that's who we thought we would see to start the game. And West coming to the left side, and he is taken down on third down and goal at the four-yard line. Well, it's Jalen West, not Derek West. So Jalen West into the game. He loses a yard on the play. It's fourth and goal. And it looks like they're keeping the they're gonna keep the offense, offense on the field. You coach Rich Freeman, why not? You come this far, right. you know what your offense has had struggles doing throughout the season. You know what it would mean to your team to, to finish off a drive and get six points instead of having to settle for three? Look like we call the timeout here. They want to talk about it. All right, timeout. Somebody called a timeout. We'll take a break with them. Seven to three in favor of Morehouse. It's fourth and goal. Same refreshing spray. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it their own way. At Georgia Power, millions of Georgians depend on us to deliver clean, safe, reliable, and affordable energy. That's why we've invested nearly $10 billion to make the electric grid stronger and smarter and to improve service and reduce outages. By deploying high-tech self-healing networks, we can find problems quickly, reroute power, and keep Georgians connected. We're committed to making critical investments to meet our customers' needs today 
and for decades to come. To the right. Fourth and goal. Morehouse looking to add to a 7-3 lead. Back here at BT Harvey Stadium. 93rd edition of the Battle of the AUC. We got fourth and goal over the middle. That was tipped. Tried to hit Marquay's pride, but it was knocked away at the last second. And that's going to be a turnover on downs, as you see. Andrew Bloodsaw there and pride exchanging pleasantries again. Yeah, a little, a little, a little, a little, a little talk there, but uh, that was the play they they want the call coming out uh, from the from the timeout, the passing play rather than try to go for the run. And Clark Atlanta defense was able to hold. So Morehouse, they they actually drove it from their own 36 down to the Clark Atlanta four, but could not punch it in. So Clark Atlanta in the shadow of its own end zone will take this possession as Brown comes back out. And now let's see what happens with Clark Atlanta. Like you said, they're in the shadow of their own end zone. You don't want to have any miscues right now. Brown Trenton almost got Hunter offside there. And uh, I don't think the uh, Clark Atlanta was set after the motion man. Can't go too much further back, though, if you're Clark Atlanta. Yeah. You go back much further, you'll be on I-20. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few blocks away from the stadium. Uh, so that's what's happening. So apparently it takes it half the distance back to the two-yard line. So obviously these games are always – there's always something unexpected that happens. These games are always seem to be close and uh, just a, a great rivalry game between these two Fasten schools. Fasten your seatbelts. You know what we've seen during the first half. The offenses have struggled a bit. The second half, it could be a completely different game. Like Atlanta. Brown goes over the middle pass just a little bit too far for his receiver. Stevens. Just like that, it's going to be second down. Had Carlos Donovan there on the defense. You get a look at Coach Rich Friedman from Morehouse uh, playing on, on defense. And now let's see what Clark Atlanta comes up with this play. You want to get something, do you just run a running play just to give yourself some working room, or you're going to just throw on, your, on, on this attempt as well? You want to move the ball forward because if you have to punt it, you don't want it to be a punt where you're going to give Morehouse the ball, you know, on their side, on your side of the 50. So what's the decision that they make here? Uh, so Brown, yeah, it looks like they might have had a I had a penalty outside here. penalty. So yeah. we'll move it up to the seven yard line. We apologize, folks. We're, we're, we're flying this plane almost. Uh, but we're getting it there as Brown takes it down the field and almost caught. And Selders looks like he might be called for interference. That pass incomplete. Looks like Clark Atlanta is going to pick up a few more yards. Looked like he had his back to the ball and took a swing at it. And the official, I guess, didn't like Let's take another look at it. A throw out there. And they got tangled up just a bit, but uh, enough to, to draw that penalty flag. Tried to hit West on the play. Let's take a look at the flag here. Oh, they're going to call it offensive pass offensive defense. Pass. Wow. Okay. So it goes against Clark Atlanta, so they'll be moved back inside the five-yard line. Got to be deep in the second quarter. We're not, not sure how much time <laughs> is left. We do apologize, but... We'll try to get that corrected as soon as possible. Yep. Still a a great rivalry, great football game. You offensive, know, not if you're an offensive fan, but if you're a defensive you had great fan, defense had been too bad. and you had great had special teams. You right. had it well, except for the missed field goal attempts, right? You know, by Clark Atlanta. And this handoff goes to Kinsey. Kinsey is cut down at the 12, 11 yard line. 93, Elijah Campbell in on the stop once again. He's been very active throughout this first half on the in interior defense for the Maroon Tigers. Tigers give up 377 yards a game. That's 170 on the ground. 
But that's still a lot of yards. That is a lot of yards. Last week, gave a 413 to Albany State and then 31 to 7 loss. If 240 yards to Quez Williams, Albany State, big game for him last week as that pass is caught. Nice catch on the sideline by Stevens. He takes it all the way out to the 20 yard line. Darren Stevens out of Conyers, Georgia, going to make the nice catch here, fling it out there, and send pick up some yards afterwards. 22 yard line, so that would good for 11. Clark Atlanta trailing by four. Just the field goal, but 21 yard field goal by Lobo. That was on the last possession. Two missed field goals early in the first quarter. Of course, I've had a punt blocked as well. So, third and a yard, got to get to the 23. And they hand it off to Kinsey. And Kinsey has room for the first time all the way out to the 35. Good for 13 and a big first down for Clark Atlanta. Big first down off that right side of the line. Found the opening and then, hey, a little burst right there, picking up the yards. Nice play, 25, Zachary Belton in on the stop for Morehouse, but not before the Panthers get a first down. The 13-yard run by Kinsey is going to be first down at the 35. Kinsey will get it again. This time, not as much room as the last one. Now to the 36. Campbell in front of that. Those two guys in the middle, especially Campbell, he's really been a, a workhorse early on for Morehouse on the defense. Been very busy, very busy uh, doing some things, stopping the run and also bringing some pressure on the quarterbacks, whichever one has been in for Clark Atlanta, either Brown or Vincent Nelson. It's Brown now, and he started the game. Brown looking to put it up again. Coming near side, pass is caught. Out of bounds at the 47. Another catch for Stevens. And that should be good enough for a first down for the Panthers. Nice route running. The throw is there. The catch. Get that feet, get that foot inside inbounds. And move the chains. Well, good for 11 for Stevens. That's his third catch of this first half. Well, I can't wonder run on the field. <laughs> Coach uh, pulled it back by his by his uh, shirt there. Now he gets the play and he's going to come in. It's Clark Atlanta trying to finish four and six. The first season under Slater. First down at the forty-seven. Brown able to escape the pocket. The throw is short. I believe it's going to be bounced in and incomplete. And it'll be second down for the Panthers. We threw it out there, and it's incomplete. Couldn't get it out that far enough for his receiver. So it skipped it in there. Didn't quite set his feet that time. Just kind of had to throw it on the run. and Didn't get enough on it, as you mentioned there, Sam. And Again, this... Uh, both of these offenses have been ch have been challenged out the year. Obviously, there have been some opportunities for both teams. They've had some guys open, but connections just have not been made. There's a second down. Well, showing a blitz from the corner. They pick it up. Throw is caught. That's McCoy again. And a quick hit by Lyman. Right there in the middle will be a short game. And uh, another whistle. Got a timeout call here. See what we've got here. Swan has gotten a lot of uh, TV time this day. Yeah, yeah. Something else, 71. So it looks like there might be a penalty against Morehouse. Regroup now. Let's see what Clark Atlanta can do. 
We're going to figure out how much time we have left until halftime here. 71 for Clark Atlanta is Anthony Harrison, freshman from New Orleans. One of the big eaters up front for the Panthers. Brian and Price in the backfield together. So third down, Brown left side. It is caught. Sliding in is McCoy, but will be well short of the first down. He's out to the 48-yard line. And they'll bring up another punt for Clark Atlanta. Yeah, McCoy the catch and Ronald Davis with the, with the defense there for Morehouse. We talked about the, the miscues by Clark Atlanta, two missed field goals and a blocked punt. Lobo well, we did hit, hit a 21-yard field goal, but for the most part, Clark Atlanta's moved the ball, but the mistakes have kept them from taking the lead in this football game. That's what it's looked like, uh, you know, far, and I know Coach Slater uh, is not happy about that, and she'll have an interesting conversation with these young men in the locker room at halftime uh, to go out there and, and finish some of these drives. We'll take a break here. Seven to three. Morehouse on top of Clark and Landon. Looks like the Maroon Tigers are going to get the football back here in just a moment. Morehouse leading 7-3 on Clark Atlanta. And that had a punt during the break. And Lobo's kick went down to the 8-yard line. So Morehouse will start with this possession here late in the second quarter. And, of course, uh, two great two great schools, a lot of great alumni, and just, uh, just two, uh, a campus in a hole that is uh, really uh, really a drool there in Atlanta. It really is. And, you you know, the, these both of these stadiums, have been featured in, in movies. We'll get into that in a minute. If you these movies, these stadiums look familiar to you. That there's a reason for that. All right, we'll get the filmography of the two stadiums here in a minute as Davis tries to work the middle. And there's that big 97 again, man. Maybe we should have him on the Impact players earlier Maybe so, because he is going out. He's trying to get our attention. And hey, you guys forgot about me. You guys forgot about me. He says, "Look, I'm going to go out and make these big plays, rushing the quarterback, stopping the run, whatever it takes." Wow. All over today is Jalen Farham. Oh my goodness! Farham, he is made. He has definitely made an impact on this game. Yeah, and it looks like that will do it for the first half. So Morehouse, they get a block punt by Donovan Parks. He recovers it in the end zone for a touchdown, and then Fernando Lobo's 21-yard field goal, seven to three at halftime, as Morehouse 
Lee's Clark Atlanta halftime is coming up in just a moment. It is halftime here at BT Harvey Stadium in Atlanta where Morehouse has a 7-3 lead on Clark Atlanta. Come right there into back with Sam Crenshaw and Sam. Uh, you talked a little bit a moment ago about the familiarity of the stadiums. Some people may have seen these stadiums on some films and some uh, television shows over the years. Yeah, and some people who've been involved and played in games as well over there. Kumari, we talk about John David Washington, right. uh, who um, you know we're now seeing – He's in the family business, as you might say now. <laughs> uh, but we remember him playing at running back at Morehouse, and uh, Papa Denzel would come to games and wouldn't do any interviews, no media. Everything was he was a, he was a parent, right. you know. And it was cool to see someone who reached that status come uh, to just be a parent uh, there at the Morehouse games on Saturday. A lot of people come out to stargaze and see we were there. But <laughs> but after the game, he would just uh, you know he and his wife would wait for John David and maybe bring a couple of teammates. They go out to dinner just like any other parents would do. They come to see. So it was great to see him uh, do that and great to see the success because I think at the time he left Morehouse, he may have had the uh, the rushing record for the school. He had a standing and he had a, a couple of uh, preseasons, uh, I think, with the, with the Rams organization. Wow. 
in the National Football League before, like I say, going to the family business. But if some of these facilities look familiar, let me familiarize with some of them. Uh, you know, th- this particular stadium was seen in the movie School Days. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. There was a homecoming scene where they're going to see, do you want to see me lose this game? Do you want to see me lose my job? As, as Ozzie Davis, <laughs> right. the late Ozzie Davis said he was playing the real role of the coach in Spike Lee's production uh, uh, that, that was filmed, a lot of it was filmed on the Morehouse campus. So B.T. Harvey Stadium w- was featured in that movie. Uh, the Clark Atlanta Stadium was seen in the movie Drumline, wow, yeah. as well as the Clark Atlanta Band is in the movie <laughs> Drumline. Uh, so that, that that's some uh, Hollywood there on the campus. And then, of course, Herndon Stadium, which is across from um, from, uh, from Clark Atlanta Stadium, was the stadium for Morris Brown College. Um, also had some of the scenes from Drumline Shot, but also We Are Marshall. Wow. Uh, shot. So if you want to see the stadiums uh, with the Atlanta University Center, just, you know, get your movies <laughs> and check them out. The, the, the film. And be at a time when the yes. film industry is, is huge, yes. you know, in Georgia and in the Atlanta area. And a lot of these young people uh, from these schools are, are seeking to, to go to work uh, in that business with billions of dollars in the film production. So uh, some of these young people are taking advantage of that. But as you see this band, Drumline is happening today, right now. Mighty Marching Panthers on the field. We'll have more halftime for you. Morehouse, 7-3 in favor of the Maroon Tigers.
Morehouse on top of Clark Atlanta, 7-3 at the half. And, of course, this is the final Saturday of the regular season. This next week, the SIC Championship game will take place at Columbia, South Carolina, down there with the Benedict Tigers as they host the the Tuskegee Golden Tigers. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Tuskegee back in the SIC title game and for Benedict, I believe this is their first time ever in the championship game. Impressive season for Benedict, such an impressive season. They have shown and they've really, you know, run the gauntlet, especially in the East mm -hmm. and everywhere they've gone. It's been the result have been the same. What a season they put together. And in a rare a rare matchup between Tuskegee and Benedict. You don't see those teams play uh, very often. No, you really don't. You really don't. But but you're going to get to see it in this in this championship game, and I think it's going to be great to uh, programs. And uh, obviously, you know, with Coach Ruff in his first season there, Tuskegee mm -hmm. gets to get them there. That's big for him, as he says. This is going to be his only season as coach. He's going to. But that's what's coming up. There's your matchup coming up on ESPN three. It will be at Benedict College. Looking forward to that one. Tuskegee and Benedict, two great teams, should be a great championship game. Well, coming back, we got some more halftime festivities for you as the Mighty Martha Jean Panthers still on the field at BT Harvey Stadium. We'll come back with some more halftime in just a moment. Morehouse, 7-3 to three in favor over Clark Atlanta.
SIAC College Football here, presented by Georgia Power. Sees Morehouse College on top of Clark Atlanta, 7-3 at halftime. Kamari Darrington joined by Sam Crenshaw. And Sam, this first half, really a lot of miscues on both sides, but the more costly mistakes have been made by Clark Atlanta. Two missed field goals and, of course, the block punt in the end, uh, recovering the end zone with a touchdown by Morehouse. Missed opportunities. I'm sure both coaches will go in as you talk about Morehouse had that long drive that ended right there on the one-yard line. They couldn't get the ball into the end zone. So I think both coaches at halftime are going to be talking about missed opportunities, what they can do to go out in the second half and clean things up and get six points out of those situations uh, when the offense is progressing. Well, we're going to take a look at the first half highlights. Here's the Morehouse College House of Funk getting on here at BT Harvey Stadium in the first half, which – uh, really, uh, not a lot of highlights, but if you're a defensive uh, defensive fan, you had a lot of highlights in that first half. Of course, Elijah Campbell on one side for Morehouse. Jalen Parham, that was a nice pass over the middle there to Devin McCoy. And then Carlisle would get chased, and Parham. that's Jalen Parham who yeah. was all over he the field. He was everywhere, but then and the big play here. That's the big play there. Parks with the block. He runs it down. He recovers it in the end zone. And that's the only touchdown of the game. And meanwhile, Kinsey. It's had some tough sledding run the football, and uh, the Morehouse defense has really been playing well also. They have been playing very well, and even on this play, and this was a good one, uh, the, the the bubble screen, nice yardage. Then they start with the direct snaps there to Kinsey. Kinsey got it down close enough for Milan, Fernando Lobo to kick the 21-yard field goal. Those are the only points for Clark Atlanta. But then Ernest Davis finally got some running room. There towards the end of that first half, so maybe Morehouse has found a little something that they can uh, exploit there in the second half. You see, this is a nice grab there by Darren Stevens right out of the. And then one more run here by Kinsey. So not much there on the first half. That'll do it. We'll be back for the second half. Maybe we'll see a lot, of, a few more sparks here in the second half. Morehouse on top of Clark Atlanta, seven to three. We're coming back with the second half in just a moment. Watch against IAC football on ESPN+. Plus.
back here at BT Harvey Stadium. The crowd is excited. Ready to get the second half underway. It's the Clark Atlanta band and the Morehouse band going back and forth against each other. You see the Panthers. Oh, yeah. And that's oh. what you come to this game for. Yes. You, you come to the game. The, the band's the spirit, atmosphere. And we talk about what hasn't been happening with the, with the games. We want to see some things, you know, increase and better execution. We may see that in the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fans really come out because of the rivalry. You got old friends from classes that are back together. Right. And, uh, you know, they, they want the bragging rights. They want to go out and get this game and, get, and win it. But they also come out for a good time and good time and fellowship. No question about it. One of the great games of the season in the SIAC. We've got some other SIAC scores I was able to pull up. Uh, Benedict, well, they're going to finish off a perfect regular season, 54-7 to on top of Allen there in the fourth quarter there. Kentucky State and Central State even at 21. That game is late in the second quarter. In fact, it was like Central State just tied it up. And Miles on top of Tuskegee, 13-6. to It's been rough in that series for Tuskegee as of late. It really has. As, uh, and you know the Miles players are saying, you know, all right, Coach Ruffin, you know, we, 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 <laughs> remember us? Remember us? Exactly. You know? Sam Shade taking over there at Miles. And uh, Fort Valley State on top of Albany State, 24-14 at the S. Fort Valley State, you know, they still have some things they could be playing for here uh, later on in the season, and Albany State as well. So this is a this is a huge game. It's a big game. Yeah, that Found City Classic there in yeah, Columbus. Down, down in Columbus, that's always a, a big Saturday when they play that game. Those between those two rivals in South Georgia, and so yeah, I'm sure that that game is very well attended, and looks like those teams are, are putting on a great show. And you're right, there's still some things there for that Fort Valley team to go out and fight for. You know, you look at the the. The regional rankings, the Division Two, in, in in this Super Region Two here, and you got Benedict right there uh, has a chance, perhaps, to be the number one seed if they can they can win next week against Tuskegee. But then you got teams like Fort Valley State, Albany State, all there in the mix for first time really in a long time. The SIC has a legitimate chance they could get two teams into the into the playoffs, and that would be big for the SIC. Be big for the conference. They really would be, and it shows the hard work that's gone on. Uh, with the coaching staffs uh, to really pull together teams and, and, and be competitive and have that kind of impression. And also play well when they play outside of the conference to go out and then get wins. Those are things that are also impressive, and the pollsters have to pay attention and respect that, you know, and get that from the teams in the conference this year. Of course, later on today, Lane will take on Savannah State. Those are two teams that are having decent seasons as well, especially for Lane, a team that was in the West race up until – uh, last week, of course, but uh, Lane having another solid season. And Savannah State, since rejoining the SIEC, has really been the uh, really. I don't, know they, I don't know if it's been a surprise because they do have Division One talent, right. of course. Right, that wasn't but, a surprise for you me. You know, obviously coming in, coming in, you didn't know exactly what to expect. But Savannah State has done a very good job. Really good job. They've had the coaching change down there, and they're, they're still moving things forward. But Lane. Lane did something impressive early this season. They go into Nashville and they get the win over Tennessee State. Yes. That was so big for that program mm -hmm. uh, to get that win. Very impressive what they're doing at Lane. And of course, Lane beat Tuskegee for the first time ever last year. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 23-24 uh, zip, and they finally got that win over Tuskegee. And you see, early this year, they got a big one over Tennessee State. That might be one of the re one of the things that has actually helped uh, add to the profile of the SIAC. You know, Absolutely. Win, getting those wins outside of conference. And uh, you, you can see it in the rankings. There's a lot of respect, especially uh, even as the rankings came out uh, for the SIAC. So Morehouse is going to get the ball here to start the third quarter. And we've got a clock up, so hopefully we'll be able to yeah, keep the time. We can tell you what's time. happening. The time, we'll right? Tell you how the time goes on. This is Fernando Lobo ready to kick it off and pride back deep for the Maroon Tigers. Second half underway from BT Harvey Stadium. Here's Pride from the five. And Pride will take it straight up the middle and takes it across the 30 to the 31 yard line. So a decent field position to start for Morehouse. And Kamar Carlisle, Kamar Carlisle coming back out. Quarterback for Morehouse had, 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 had some decent plays there in that first half. And really, Ernest Davis, really towards the end of that first half, really uh, was able to uh, pick off some decent runs. Yeah, that drive stall there, you know, you know, we're inside the one or two yard line. Mm -hmm. they, they go on that fourth down and try to get the pass play that gets deflected. Where they are now, uh, with some good working room to start this first possession of the second half. And let's see if they can uh, recapture that offense. Team trying to avoid a winless season, which will be the first under Rich Freeman. And the handoff goes to Davis. Davis able to push the pile out to the 35-yard line. 
pick up a four on the play. So good play for Davis on first down. Here he is, just follows blockers right there, gets up in there, and there's a bunch of white jerseys around him, but not after he makes some good forward progress. And Morehouse hasn't had a winless season since 1999. Yeah. So, I uh, mean, they've, they've been pretty consistent with, with Coach Freeman. They, they were great expectations. Mm -hmm. I think this team was preseason picked to be fourth in the East. They finished third last season. Carlisle over the middle pass caught by Pride. And Pride lost the football second time today. And it's picked up by Clark Atlanta. Cameron Ivey with another uh, fumble recovery for Clark Atlanta. So, Pride, the second time he's coughed it up. My goodness, Cameron Ivory at the right place at the right time. Great throw, great catch, got to hold on to it. Whoops. 24 is right there to pick it up and bring it back the other way. Now Clark Atlanta has the ball back in some good field position to work early here in the second half. That opportunity goes by the board for Morehouse. Clark Atlanta with the football and the chance to go down and maybe put some points on the board, maybe take the lead in the game. Let's see which quarterback we get. So Morehouse already struggling offensively. Second time that they've given up the football, and here's Sharif Brown back in for Clark Atlanta at quarterback. They're at the Morehouse 49 to start the possession, and off the play fake, Brown steps up, gets it away, gets hit as he throws it, and that one incomplete. West had his hands on it, but could not hold on to it. Three maroon jerseys were there, and Brown is down. He yeah. took a big hit at the end of that big play. Hit. He took a big hit, gets rid of it, boom, gets a shot right there, and Ball comes out, was knocked out, trying to reach out with Ronnie West. And they're having to come out and really, really check on Brown right now. He's holding his back right now. 14.02 left in this third quarter. We'll take a break as they tend to Sheree Brown. Hope he's all right. Four-point deficit for Clark Atlanta. Keep your eyes on the horizon 100% of the time. You are a success story in the making. You are ready to take on the world. You are ready for this. You will get there from here. And you can't wait to get started. And as proud supporters of HBCUs around the country, we can't wait to see how far you go. Since 1837, historically black colleges and universities have been fulfilling their purpose to educate and empower. Since 2009, the Home Depot's Retool Your School Campus Improvement Grant Program has also been powered by a purpose to update, upgrade, and uplift HBCU campuses. Today, 44 million votes, 4.1 million dollars, and 147 grants later, we remain inspired by the people, the passion, and the power of HBCUs to continue our purpose. Learn more at retoolyourschool.com. Sprite? No, same Sprite. New bottle. It's kind of like same folder. New heights. Same jam. New style points. Same pregame. New drip. Same spokes. New person. Same ice. New tray. That's cold. New bottle. Same refreshing Sprite. <laughs> At Georgia Power, millions of Georgians depend on us to deliver clean, safe, reliable, and affordable energy. That's why we've invested nearly $10 billion to make the electric grid stronger and smarter and to improve service and reduce outages. By deploying high-tech self-healing networks, we can find problems quickly, reroute power, and keep Georgians connected. We're committed to making critical investments to meet our customers' needs today and for decades to come. On Vincent Nelson back into the game now for Clark Atlanta. And Sharif Brown took that big hit from Elijah Campbell. Second and 10 now from the 49. 14 2 remaining. And got some early whistles. This is going to be. It's like it's going to go against Clark Atlanta. Yeah, marking off five yards there. There's a lot going on. You have to change a quarterback off of an injury. You got to bring another quarterback in. Now you get a five yard penalty, get you going backwards. And this is after you get some momentum on a turnover. Uh, you want to see something good happen. You, you've gotten the ball back early here in the second half. Um, you take the ball away from Morehouse. 
You want to see your team show some consistency, get down the field, and, and convert. But now you're going to do it with your number two quarterback. Vincent Nelson into the game, around on the sideline. We'll hope he's all right. Minute into the third quarter, Morehouse still in the strength of that block punt touchdown, leaving it 7-3. to three. And a lot of time for Vincent Nelson. He's going to just take it up the middle. Gets the penalty yardage back and loses his helmet as he gets inside the 45. And a couple of uh, well, Tigers had, a little had a, aggressive there at the he end. had about three defenders converge at one time. Joel Gertman, number three, was one of them. And they just put the hit on him all at the same time. And the helmet, he goes one way and the helmet goes the other. How do you do this now? Because if the helmet comes off, he has to come out of the game. Who's going to be a quarterback? That's a good question. Might have to go direct stamp. El Brown is back in the game now, so perhaps they put an extra padding there on his lower back, and he's back there ready to go. Second down and five from the 43, and that one underneath, and it's incomplete. Brandon Henson was the intended target. Intended target, and throw it in there. Morehouse turns it away. Number 11, Tyler Hunter. They're helping out. Morehouse defense has played, played well in this game. Just the three points allowed. And now it's fourth down. So fourth and, fourth and five. They had second and five there a second ago. In any event, Landon Lobo will punt this one away. Let's see if they try, try, try the block here. Nope, they're going to let him get off the kick. And Lobo, sky-high punt. This bounce is actually takes some Morehouse bounce. It'll bounce all the way out to the 25, so that doesn't help the average for Lobo. And, again, Slater has the headset off. Yeah, uh, not happy. Not happy right now with what's happening. The offense got to – his team goes out and get a takeaway. You feel like it's a chance to seize some momentum in this game and put some points on the board. It doesn't happen. And now Morehouse is back on offense. So not much for either team on their first possession of the second half. Let's see if they come back and run the ball, if they try to get more confidence for Kamar Carlisle. Wasn't his fault last time he threw the ball in there. It was a nice completion, and the receiver didn't hang on to it. That's one of those things where it starts to starts to get in the head of the quarterback. Like, man, if I throw it to this guy, is he going to be able to hang on to it? But Pride has been a was a very good receiver for them last year. Yep. And a 465 yards, all-conference player. Uh -huh. and. Uh, you know, just a, a tough day for him so far today, but still plenty of time left to make up for it. So the Maroon Tigers just waiting around. I guess we're, we're waiting on the – Waiting for the white hat to say you can say yes. you can play. I don't know if there's anything that's being marked off or exactly what's happening to the layers right now. Players are there, ready to go. Here comes the referee. We see the white hat running through the screen. And maybe he gets in position. He'll toot the whistle and say, hey, you can go ahead and resume hostilities. We'll see. All right. Well, with Davis in the backfield, ready to kick off this drive for the Maroon Tigers. Came into the game averaging less than 10 points a game. They've already yeah. got seven. Yeah, seven, but, they, you know. But that was, of course, off of a special team, so. Well, we've seen this offense put together a drive. They know mm -hmm. that they can put together a drive against this Clark Atlanta defense. They've done that now. Can they repeat that and this time finish it? So here we go starting this possession. Let's see what they do. So start this drive from their own 25. Clock at 13.09. And a little sweep here. This is Cameron Brunson. And Cameron takes it out to the 32-yard line, so a decent gain on first down for the Maroon Tigers. Nice play here, nice run, and watch for 23. That's Julian Little going to come up and make the stop on this play after a very nice, very nice run on that play. So Brunson gets his first touch of the ball game. And Morehouse will continue to drive it second and three now. Brunson, a freshman from Atlanta, so playing in his hometown. Final game of the season. Morehouse trying to get that first win under the belt as Carlisle takes it straight up the middle, has the first down, and out near the 40-yard line. A couple of Panthers there on the stop, including Terrence Harris once again. 
First down for the Maroon Tigers. Great to see Carlisle here. That's a design play. That's what they want him to do. You want to hold on to it. Yeah. You're in there. A lot of people taking shots at him. That quarterback coming in and want to hit him so they can make that ball come loose. Held on to it. Got the first down. So one house moving the ball now. Approaching midfield. And up goes to Davis. Davis left side. Some one in running room that time. Nice gain on first down all the way out to the 47-yard line. That one good for eight. And you can see some momentum here for Morehouse on this drive. That time he's running off the, behind the left side of the line. Gets a good block. It's a hole. Before the white jerseys take him down, Xavier Hopkins, 41 in on the stop there. Clark Lamb. Hopkins had a nice game so far for the Panthers on the defensive side. So Davis out. See who the running back is in for him. Looks like that's Joshua Weems. It's one of the uh, guys that Coach was telling us about. The season began, didn't know he'd be, he would be on the traveling squad. Because he's a walk. <laughs> he's a walk on. Third day is a walk on. But we got a whistle here. I right, got a timeout here. Uh, Carlisle took it. Seven to three in favor of Morehouse on top of Clark Atlanta here in the third quarter. Coming back. Six left in this third quarter. Morehouse on top, seven to three on Clark Atlanta. Clark Atlanta with wins over Edward Waters, and back-to-back -back victories over Allen and Savannah State. Nice win for them. Coming in off of a 49 to 20 loss to Benedict last week. Back-to-back -back losses coming in, and for Morehouse, it was rough for them last week. A loss 31 to seven at Albany State. Yep, yep, yep. And that's one the coach said they had 23 players. Uh, that they couldn't play in that in that game. This team has just had to deal with the injury bug uh, throughout the season. But today, you know, if they can pull it together today, they'll have a reason to smile. So Dallas Johnson in the backfield with Carlisle. Carlisle has room to run up the middle, across the 40, all the way down to the 32-yard line. With some face mask helmets coming off, and, oh, that's not a good sign right that's there. That's not a good sign. He's down, obviously, in some distress there. Nice execution, and he's making the run with it. But then he's pulled down, and boy, it seems like he's something really hurting his helmets off, and it seems like something's really hurting him there. We got a we got a clock Atlanta player down as well. A lot happened after that play, and with a player down here with a helmet off, that doesn't that doesn't look good. Uh, they are calling for some help uh, to come and get him uh, off the field. 
I just hate to see that, especially with these guys playing. Like you were saying earlier, for a lot of these guys, these seniors could be that last game. And, uh, yeah. And this is a, this is a young freshman player who's had to be thrown in and had to play more than people thought. You know. You know. Let, let's take a break and uh, come back, and uh, we'll go to break seven to three in favor of Morehouse. <laughs> Georgia Power. Millions of Georgians depend on us to deliver clean, safe, reliable, and affordable energy. That's why we've invested nearly $10 billion to make the electric grid stronger and smarter and to improve service and reduce outages. By deploying high-tech self-healing networks, we can find problems quickly, reroute power, and keep Georgians connected. We're committed to making critical investments to meet our customers' needs today and for decades to come. join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. You can see right there they are they're getting ready to take Carlisle off of the field. You can see the concern for the Morehouse players and the training staff out there. And uh, just something you, you don't don't want to see to happen to anyone, especially the way that these games go. And well, of course, and it's unfortunate that something that Morehouse has been. Uh uh, really concerned. We look like that's his mom there with the yeah. jersey that's there. Some family members there just to comfort and and console him. Obviously, it's a uh, pretty severe injury as this game has been halted. And as you talk with Coach Rich Freeman, this team has had more than its share mm -hmm. of uh, injuries during the course of this season. But here's a young player that he's had to throw into the starting role mm -hmm. uh, in the last few weeks uh, for this football team. And with uh, with Derek West out, we thought we were going to see Derek West today, but instead we're seeing Kamar Carlisle and a uh, freshman from uh, the southwest side of Atlanta out of Thurrell High School and um, was due to be a red shirt this year. Mm -hmm. uh, just didn't think he was going to have to play, and it, you, you, you never know. Okay. All gonna, right, Carlisle. Step still attending to Carlisle in uh, still a little delay. We'll come right back to BT Harvey Stadium in just a moment.
back here at BT Harvey Stadium as uh, you see the entire Morehouse team there. And of course, Warren Carlon being attended to. Let's update you on some scores from around the yep. SIEC while they, while they take care of him. 54-21 uh, now, uh, Benedict on top of Allen. That's late in the fourth quarter, so Benedict, I uh, think, end up 10-0. Yeah. Uh, 20, still 21-21 tie between Kentucky State and Central State. That is late in the second quarter. And now into the third quarter, Miles still ahead, 13-6 to on Tuskegee. And this is big because Tuskegee hadn't played any games at home all season. That's right. Tuskegee is home today for the first time all season. They've done some upgrades, much like Morehouse, mm -hmm. and some upgrades to their facilities and to the stadium, and they've had to play their games everywhere but home. I think they played one or two games over in Montgomery. Right, Crampton uh, Bowl, yeah. The Crampton Bowl, but they are back uh, at their home stadium uh, today, and uh, I'm sure they want to do something good in front of the crowd that's come out to see them and today. I, and I believe that would be the fourth straight win for Miles in that series, which wow. is a rare, it a really rare occurrence is. It there. It truly Tuskegee's is. had a, a big a chunk of those wins over the years, especially with Willie Slater being there. But the Miles, especially with Reginald Ruffin coming in, he took when he took that program over, he started to change the way that series was going. So, and obviously, Miles, no, no division title on the line today, as usually is, but uh, Miles still ahead, 13-6. to six. And, of course, the big game in Fountain City Classic, this is one of the games that I think was circled on when people looked at all the HBCU games across the landscape. This was yeah. one of those games that said, hey, this is a game you better better find a way to, to get to because 24-14 right now is the score for Valley State on top of Albany State. A pair of seven and two teams, a Division two playoff implications on the line there. Right, so right. a huge, huge game. Oh, that's a long-time rivalry, rivalry though, the big-time yes. South Georgia rivalry. Yes. You don't have to say a whole lot <laughs> when you put Fort Valley and Albany State together now. No, no question <laughs> about it. But today just uh, even more on the line today, but obviously a rivalry game. And then and here, of course, uh, uh, another one of the great rivalries in the SIAC. This is kind of the rivalry Saturday around the SIAC, and so you have some great games. But, you know, the SIAC this year, really, it's been kind of a, 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 you know, it's been one of those seasons where we didn't know exactly what to expect coming in. You know the usual suspects uh, coming into the You had some season, changes. You had some new had coaches some changes, in some though. places. You had some changes at Tuskegee. You had a change at Clark Atlanta, change at Fort Valley. Mm -hmm. you, you had some some uh, some changes around the around the conference. So you really didn't know exactly what you were gonna what you, you're gonna expect. But that's always a reason to be excited. Mm -hmm. And that little thing you don't mean it'll change down at Savannah State as well. Right. So um, you, you know, you didn't know what to expect. Uh, you know what had happened in the past, uh, but those are things that were, they were pretty excited about this coming season, and it has really borne things out uh, to have the excitement of a program that Benedict uh, and, and the conference getting that national ranking yes. and that respect. Yes. And, and that's the thing that is, that is uh, that's so important. And, of course, the Tuskegee-Benedict Championship game, not the only game in the SIAC next week. The two newcomers of the league, Allen and Edward Waters, getting together next week. Of course, those two schools kind of add to the footprint of the conference. Allen, of course, being uh, still in Columbus, South Carolina. And then you've got Edward Waters. Now you're getting down into Florida. And getting those, the, those, well, getting, getting, the those conference, getting the there. conference back into Florida. Because, yes. you know, for years and years, Florida and m originally mm -hmm. was a member of the SIAC, right. and as well as, as Bethune-Cookman. Uh, they're now in the SWAC, right. um, but it gets a, it is re really is important, I think, for the conference to get that footprint back into the state of mm -hmm. Florida. Such a talent-rich uh, uh, state and recruiting area. Uh, the high school football is so good there, just like it is, you know, mm -hmm. in, in Georgia right. as well. But the high school football is so good in, in Florida. Can you get in there and lure and several of those guys to come up and be a part? And when you have a school in your conference in there, it yeah. opens it up. Really, for the rest of the conference. Right, exactly. And so, you know, these two schools would be able to go in and, and, you know, see Florida, see if the guys want to come and be a part of football. That's one thing that Coach Slater talked about when I talked with him on media day about his excitement about coming to Clark Atlanta. He's like, we're in Atlanta. Yeah. You know, a young person don't want to come to Atlanta. Right, you know, exactly. So, so, we, so we're going exactly. to take advantage of where we are and make the most of it. Uh, and, 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 you know, obviously get this, this uh, share of talent from the, the metro Atlanta area and around the state of Georgia, but also from outside of that Georgia. Who wants to come to Atlanta, you know, get your college education, you know, play some great college football and be a part of what he's doing? Because if they know the background of that man, they know he comes to win. Yes. And he comes to win championships. Right. Don't you want to come here and be a part of this? And so that's, that's, that's what he has to sell. And he's it's part of a beautiful campus, you know. Oh, yeah. You've got, of course, these two schools. you got Spelman there. Yeah. Morris Brown kind of trying to get Morris things Brown's back is, is, is on, on track back well. together. I understand their first sport 
back maybe soccer. Okay. Uh, you know, everybody wants to know when they're going to bring the football back. <laughs> right. uh, you know, because Mar- Morris Brown football is always uh, so strong. And, uh, you know, send a number of players. We go back to, my goodness, uh, George Atkinson. We go yes. back to, to Alfred Jenkins. We go back to Ezra Johnson. Yeah. All these guys who went and played the National Football League for Morris Brown. Uh, that's such a tremendous legacy there. And it has been dormant. Um, people in Atlanta have missed Saturday afternoons at Herndon Stadium. Right. Uh, it was always so special to go to games there. So, you know, hopefully they'll regroup that. I mean, right now the thing has been to get the school with the accreditation uh, issues that financially open the doors and uh, get the enrollment uh, to, to increase. And that's what's happening on the other side of the of the AU Center. And, and you know, one's, no one's – Rooting for that to happen more right. than Clark Atlanta and, and Morehouse. Right, exactly. You know, they uh, they, they want to see that come back. There used to be a, a three-team rivalry yes. uh, there in that conference. It has been greatly missed, mm-hmm. and um, they, they look forward to the day when when, when that can return. And, then of course, uh, Morehouse campus, well, the, the entire uh, campus, of course, has so many historic buildings. Of course, Morehouse, uh, no stranger to those historic buildings as well. Not at all. And then you've been seeing one behind us mm-hmm. uh, when, whenever we whenever we, we have a, a side shot from the press box. Uh, the building behind it is the, the Martin Luther King Jr. Chapel that is it itself gone through a big renovation. Um, he's been a lot of, he raised a lot of funds for, for several years, uh, to restore and renovate that, uh, that building on campus with the big, uh, statue of Dr. King out, out right. front. And, um, uh, they had a big, uh, commemorative, uh, celebration and, and, uh, service, uh, there during the homecoming weekend. So they're quite proud, uh, to show that building off, but there, there's so much, like you said, on both campuses, um, and, and Forbes arena as the mm-hmm. season gets set to shift to basketball, right. Uh, the Morehouse basketball program has been so competitive in mm-hmm. recent years and been nationally ranked some. Uh, they have another reason, another season they expect to be uh, really productive and exciting as another building that was of a number of buildings that yeah. were left there from the 96 Olympic Games. Right. And uh, so we look forward to that. Yeah, I was about to ask you about the Olympics because this, this was a big venue. Uh, part, of course, being in Atlanta, of course, this is a big part of the Olympic uh, experience there for the uh, for fans that were out here in this area. Yeah, that whole area town not being far from, well, well the Georgia Dome at, right. at, at that time. Um, and so you, you know, a lot of facilities, your your, your gym, um, Forbes Arena comes from the Olympics, Clark Atlanta Stadium and Herndon Stadium, all a part of Olympic facilities. All right, we'll come back. Still attending the Carmar Car- Car- Carlisle here, here at BT Harvey Stadium.
Morehouse on top, 7-3 to three on Clark Atlanta. They were waiting on the ambulance to get through to be able to take Carlisle off the field. And looks like uh, looks like we're gonna have a replay of what happened. And it looks like Jalen West, who had came in earlier on the uh, earlier play, looks like he's gonna be the man to take over. Yeah, right there, number four. You are seeing him on the bottom back, right the bottom of the screen. But here's another look at, at what happened on his play and fakes the handoff. Great execution mm -hmm. here. And turns it upfield, and those white jerseys just come around him, and somehow that right leg. It's right up under there. Oh wow! Yeah, and um, and you could tell right afterwards that something was ter was terribly wrong. Yep, there you look at that at that left leg. Yes, and then obviously Terrence Harris was also injured on the play for Clark Atlanta. So, but certainly the the most severe looking injury, I should say. And here's the thing you think about, Kamari. You, mm -hmm. you, you stop play for a while. Right. you got to go back to, to play at some point. What do the coaches do with the team right now? What are you telling your team right now? To, you know, I mean, obviously, if, you, if you're Morehouse, you're concerned about your, your teammate. You know, you're standing there, and you, you, you're concerned about him, his welfare, and his well-being. If you're the Clark Atlanta team, I don't know if, you know, and you don't want to be in non-sensitive to right. what's happening, but you want to keep your team loose. It's 11 – 18 in the third quarter. Right. You haven't been that long come out of the locker room. Right. You know, and, and so now you, you're just standing and you're kind of doing nothing for an extended period of time. You want to go back out and and, and it's, it's going to be hard enough to go out and try to put this in its proper place. Right, exactly. You know, mentally and right. emotionally to still be able to go out and play the game. Uh, but, you know, you, you, you want them to be able to, to go back to it. And I'm sure before he leaves the field, the team will probably – and go up and, 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 and encircle him and whatnot. And that's kind of what it seemed like the players are waiting to do. Um, and, and then try to go out as, and as best they can, mm -hmm. you know, play uh, play the remainder of this football game. Yeah, the entire Morehouse team off the sideline. As you take a look yeah. there, Coach yeah. Slater, and, you know, he's got to yeah. be concerned as well. Absolutely. And, you know, we talked earlier at the outset because we saw this game get a little chippy mm -hmm. in the first quarter. So we know there's a lot of emotion between, you know, both teams and the guys know each other. And some of them may even go to classes together, right. although, you know, one's under the Morehouse brand, one's under the Clark Atlanta brand. Mm -hmm. uh, right now they're all concerned right. uh, about, uh, about this. Uh, but, but, you know, they're still basically the second half of this game right. uh, to be played mm -hmm. whenever they're able to uh, to, to, to get – uh, the player is safely removed and uh, and obviously taken to the hospital to be treated. Um, so just family members seem to, uh, to be with him there to try to just uh, keep him, uh, try to keep him as calm as possible. And so uh, I think the emergency vehicle is on the way out. You can see that left leg has been right, wrapped and stabilized um, as they normally do when an injury is taking place, a severe injury, and you're not able to uh, get off on his own power. And uh, they're going to bring out the necessary, the necessary equipment and apparatus to, to lift him and uh, and get him onto that emergency vehicle. And you said to keep keeping him calm because you know the adrenaline that you had playing yeah. in the game, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you get hurt, and so then there's that there's another do yeah. there's another boost of adrenaline that comes in, and your mind is probably going in so many different directions, and um, you know. You're just thinking, you know, hopefully they can get this young man into the emergency vehicle and and treat him. And obviously, with this being the last game you know, of the this, season, you know. It's a Grady event. So Grady mm -hmm. uh, would be the closest uh, hospital to the AU Center, although uh, there is a Morehouse School of Medicine that mm -hmm. is uh, that is nearby that is producing uh, young medical professionals and young doctors. But uh, – here they are getting him to the gurney, and then they'll get him to the uh, to the vehicle, and get him on his way to be treated. And of course, now you just mentioned that you know now you've got to. Do you go right back out if you're the right officials right now? Do you give the yeah. teams a, a minute to a warm, warm up period? Right. Do you do that? Or yeah. Do you go right back and play? I don't, I don't know what the rule book is. I don't know yeah. what the officials that, that will would do. Be a, that would be interesting to find out. We're going to find out real soon. Do here is, uh, Carlisle is now on to the gurney. And of course, the player's going to come up. and Yeah, they all want to come around him now, right? He gives them a thumbs around, up. Yes. Gives his teammate a thumbs up. 
and they're all going to go by and give them a handshake. And as you know, you know that that's that, that's the thing. They're they're all hurting right now. Right. They're, they're all hurting right now, uh, but they want to come by and show them the love. And you know, they um, uh, and I know they're promising them, hey man, we're going to keep the fight. We're going to keep the fight going, and and we got a medical official saying, all right, you guys got to break it up. Oh boy, yeah, so move in. And then give some room. A couple more. Love taps, of course, from his teammates. Oh, they and got to, like I said. Yeah, no. But, but they want they want to see him give the, the thumbs up. The the fans, the spectators yes. that want to see him do the thumbs up, and he gave them a thumbs up. And they've been waiting. The fans now waiting patiently. Um, you know, they came out to see this game and have a good time and fellowship. And you know, he, this this uh, terrible injury has happened to this young man. Yeah, you there see he is. There's there another he is. thumbs up. Thumbs got a little up. smile on his face. So that's smile. always a good yeah, sign. You see even Clark Atlanta player coming out to. Yeah. Clark Atlanta players out there to show their love as well. It's good sportsmanship there. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. Yep. Crowd showing him an appreciation and he says, Hey, I'm gonna be okay. I hate, hate to leave this game. Right. You know. And uh he's a he's a young player in the program. He's a freshman in the program and he's done more this season than yes. than the the coach Freeman expected him to do. This young man's supposed to get a red shirt. Mm -hmm. Wasn't even supposed to play this year. And here he is out there giving his chance, giving his team a chance uh, to be successful in this final game of the season, a season with a lot of disappointment. Right. Um, but he's come out and he's played in a way that's given everybody hope. And so, uh, yeah, oh, man, uh, you know, that's just uh, – that, 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 is, that is tough to see. Yeah, you just – you know, you know what he's got to be thinking right now. You know, he wants to be out there playing the game that he that he loves. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, well, even when you like get an that. injury, even when you get an injury, mm -hmm. you don't want to leave. Right, exactly. If you have to just stay on the sideline, come back in the game. You, right. you want you want to be a part of it, mm -hmm. you know. And so here we go with the man, and here we go with the quarterback that we thought we were going to see when the day began. All right. Well, Derek West is in. Jim from Long Beach, California. The left hander, of course. Um, Last played against Tuskegee, mm -hmm. been out for the last four weeks, but now he's into the fray for the Morehouse Maroon Tigers as the clock back on and finally back to live football. Low snap, and West showing some of his athletic ability, gets it out to Brunson, and Brunson able to take it down to the 23-yard line. So now we're back to playing football, and Brunson with his first catch of the game did have a – and a jet sweep earlier for him. Yeah, the, the low snap right now. This thing that you come in, the, you come in the game and you, your snap is low. You're able to pick it up and and get a completion. That's that's a good way to start. But you you know you would, you want things to be smooth when you come in, especially in a situation like this. Let's see how things go down on this second down play. Second and a yard, down to the 23 yard line. And West went the wrong way that time, and uh, he'll just take something out of nothing. West takes it straight up the middle. Touchdown, Morehouse. Talking about making something out of nothing. Derek West, 23-yard score, and the Maroon Tigers get their first offensive touchdown of the game. And as Kamar Carlisle is loaded into that emergency vehicle, he has to wonder what in the world happened. <laughs> you know he is hearing this yell and this scream go up, and he says, bad eye missing. Something has happened. Something incredible has happened. Oh my goodness! To have to have Derek West come in the game, turn the wrong way. I mean, he's cold coming into this <laughs> game, but still, look at what turned out there. The crowd, the, the, the players love him. They're showing him, "Hey, man, you're our guy. You happen to have our leader back." And the offense gets into the end zone. Baker's extra point is up and good. So Morehouse, right after the the injury to Carlisle, they take it the rest of the 32 yards. And they go 75 yards on the drive. 10-21 left in the third. Morehouse, 7-3. And as we'll keep it here. Yeah, man. I, I, you know, you know, this is the kind of thing that can really turn into something for this Morehouse team. You know, you, you know, you got your, your leader, and he's thrust back into this. Obviously, the, the team didn't feel like he was ready to get back in and play today. But here he is because of the player who was in the game, Carlisle, gets injured. You know, Kamari, that, that does something to right. a team. And especially to see him come in cold mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and make the best of some bad plays, a bad snap on the first right. play. He's, you know, he turns the wrong way, but he looks up and there's a hole. Right. And look at what he makes happen for this team. 
Coach Freeman talks about the chance this team has mm -hmm. when he is on the field, right. that he can do things throwing the ball and do things with his leg. We saw both of it in just two plays. Yeah, exactly. We saw what potentially he could do, and you wonder now, if he had been healthy throughout the season, mm -hmm. he's missed the last who's what could have been we'll possibly have been right. for this Morehouse team. And they're up to 14-0. So we've seen special teams get in the end zone. We've seen the offense get in the end zone, even with a quarterback change, of a forced quarterback right. change in this game. Now let's see how Clark Atlanta is going to respond to this. Uh, Morehouse 14-3 on top of Clark Atlanta here. As Baker ready to kick things off, so – was the head coach kind of tried to calm him down there on the sideline? You know he's got to be fired up after that play as this kick comes over towards the far sideline and Jones will take it from the ten and he gets some room along the sideline, cuts it back and he'll take it all the way after the forty. So good return by Jones and uh, I'll give Clark Atlanta some decent field position. Got a flag that came in late. Don't know what for. Here's Alvin Jones and he is one of the best return artists. In the, in, in the conference and showing you why right here. Nice return, but late after this, don't know what happened, but the late flag came in. Very late. There's a straight Brown getting ready to come back out on the field for the Clark Atlanta offense. So the Panthers training by 11 now. And well, not much done offensively. Of course, the miscues have been a part of the story. So from the 40, the handoff goes to Kinsey, and Kinsey has room. He breaks a tackle inside the 40. Breaks another. Can he stay on his feet? He's all the way down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. What a run by Daquan Kinsey. When it was 45, uh, Caleb Grant, so 42, Caleb Grant that finally ran him down, just breaking tackles, staying on his feet, but 42 is finally able to bring him down to the ground after a long run. That was a 42-yard run, and Kinsey had to stay on his feet there a couple of times. He <laughs> looked like he was going to go down, but able to stay on his feet, and uh, prime prime opportunity here for Clark Atlanta. You talked about the fact that this thing could open up a little bit, and you know, off to a good start. Brown over the middle. That pass almost picked off. I think Simpson got his hand on hands yep, on that, that it. That's Simpson. That Ted Simpson got a hand up, up up on that one. Great defensive play. You, you kind of figured the second half some things would pick up for this in this game. This is watch for twenty seven. Gonna get that hand up. Yep. Knock it down. Pass intended for Darren Stevens. Stevens intended target looked like he had to step on the inside, so that was a big, big knock away there by Simpson. 9.34 left in this third quarter. 14-3 is the score, and we've got whistles. Hannah was to Kinsey, but they can go back five yards. Yeah, they got procedure. Second down coming up here. So be second and fifteen now. Benedict finished it off. It is a final. Fifty four to twenty one. Benedict ten and zero on the season. Central State comes back, beats Kentucky State thirty one to thirty. So Central State ends their season at three and seven. Tuskegee and Miles now tied at thirteen late in the third quarter. Let's say about the Fort Valley Albany State score after this play. Ran off the play fake. Gervin gets his arms around him, and that pass incomplete. As Tyler Price was the intended receiver. Brown just could not get a good good grip on that football. Well, he had a defender draped on him as well, and that's the only thing he wanted to get rid of it, maybe a little sooner than he wanted to. So the pass failed incomplete. So third down coming up, and – and Columbus game has gotten closer now. Fort Valley State 24-21 on top of Albany State into the fourth quarter. So uh, big game with big implications there in Columbus. That huge rivalry there said in South Georgia. Another close one between those two great schools. So a lot going on here today. Final Saturday before the championship. Left side pass is caught by Stevens. Stevens. Is knocked back inside the 15. We'll find out where they mark his forward progress. Yeah, Cameron Cedars uh, just grabbed him and held on. 
halted the forward progress. There's 22 just going to hold on, hold on, hold on. Megan back still. Nice catch by Stevens. Take it down to the 11-yard line. It is going to be fourth down. I got to get down to the eight for a first down. So looks like Clark Atlanta is going to go for this. Well, you haven't had the greatest success with your field goal attempts <laughs> right. right now, and you and you're down 14-3. You're in the second half of the game. You know, if you're down this close. You want to see if you can get get the right play. Fourth down, Brown going to take it up the middle. He's got room. He will score. Touchdown, Clark Atlanta. Sharif Brown on fourth down. He takes it 11 yards. And the Panthers get their first offensive score of the game. There it is. That was designed play all along. The draw play. It opens up, and he walks in for the score. Like I said, this offense is opening up, opening up here in the second half of this game. So Brown gets the first offensive touchdown, I should say, for Clark Atlanta was the field goal by Fernando Lobo earlier. So back-to-back -back touchdowns in this game. 14-9 is our score right now, and here's Lobo's extra point. It is up and good. So Morehouse within four. And Clark Atlanta now within four of Morehouse. And uh, so two good drives here by both teams. Also good to see the execution after the lengthy delay. Remember, mm -hmm. we are talking about we wanted that they would give the teams even the time to warm up. The delay was so long for right. the injury. Uh, but they come back out and they, you know, and they come out and they're sharp. Mm -hmm. They're focused. Even, even Morehouse uh, having to change quarterbacks. Yeah. A bad snap and getting turned around. Still some good things uh, would happen. And, of course, uh, Clark Atlanta comes out and start out with that run game. You know, that's the thing that set the stage for that score, the long run by Kinsey mm -hmm. uh, that really got things going in the right direction. And this time they finish it off the drive with six points. Coach Slater got to be happy about that. And the 42-yard run by Kinsey set that up. And, of course, you know, for Clark Atlanta, you know, you got to feel like now you, you found a way that, uh, you know, Kinsey's finally gotten a couple of runs and finally gotten some room offensively. And so now both offenses now kind of feel like they can move the ball against these teams. So there's still a lot of time left in this game. And uh, so we should see a few more fireworks here before this one's over. It's shaping up to be what normally happens when they get together. It's not over until the very, whoever has the ball last. Right. I, I'm not saying that's how it's going to go this time, but it happens that way a lot. Well, a little juiced up there because that kicked that ball yeah. out of the end zone. <laughs> and they'll take it out to the 25, and uh, we'll just hang out here and uh, talk a little bit more about Everybody uh, slide it up a notch here. Everybody slide yes. it up a notch. <laughs> exactly. Right? You know, everybody's loosened up. I don't know if there was some nerves early in the game. You know, there was some things, and things got a little chippy early right. in the game. Uh, but now we're getting ready to quarterback, and here is, uh, here is Wes going back into the game. Now, how does he end up with a seven on the helmet and a five on the jersey? You know, that's interesting. How, right did, we, how, did, how did we do that? You know, we got to talk to the equipment manager there from Morehouse. <laughs> he might have to uh, – <laughs> might have to – might have some uh, – have some uh, talking to there from the athletic director after this one is over. <laughs> Don't know, but he came in the game and it worked. And you can tell he's been sitting on the sideline for several weeks. He's glad to be back out there and make some things happen. You see how excited he was after he scored that touchdown. Just felt like a, rele a release after that one. So on this first down, he turns the right way this time and throws it out to Fleming. Fleming makes his first catch of the game. Out to the 36-yard line. That'll be another first down. And you know what he's doing, a little, a little bit of RPO right there. You know, watch, what do you want to do? Hand off here, am I going to run it? Am I going to get open? I, and and he has the confidence, this is it, Coach Freeman, they have the confidence to give him the keys to the car. What do you see? What's there? Going to make the decision. That's the confidence in this young man. And that's the difference he brings when he's on the field. Clock moving under eight minutes left in this third quarter. West off the play fake. Three guys were there. His his receiver fell down, and another one comes up open. It's Pride to the 45-yard line. So West, and he holds on to it this time. <laughs> under the rest, and Pride able to hang on to the ball. And another first down for Morehouse. And it looked like he was maybe just throwing the ball away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he couldn't find the defender that he liked. And he just flings it out there. And there's Pride. Hey, <laughs> Look what I make found. the catch. Move the chains. 14 yards on that play, so... Things starting to pick up here offensively for both sides as West. Fasten your seatbelts, friends. <laughs> West looking to the sideline. And now ready to go from the 45 of Clark Atlanta. Pride goes in motion. And 
they'll hand this one off to Davis. And Davis cutting down. There's Hopkins again in the middle of your shot. Well, and Logan Daniels as well was down there at the bottom of the pile. Second down coming up for Clark Atlanta. Yeah, you want to do things and keep your, your ground attack going. And you remind your opponent that, hey, we can put it on the ground and make some good things happen as well. So while you got your quarterback who's th coming in, throwing the ball, making some completions, your ground attack is your bread and butter. Pick up of two on that play, second and eight. And here's West. West tries to draw. This time he's wrapped up. Big 53, Rodney Lewis in on the stop that time. Rodney Lewis, big player, preseason all-conference selection, and shows you why right there, making the big solo stop. So loss on the play. It'll bring up third down for this Morehouse offense, which came in just under 27% on third downs this season. So they got an opportunity here, third and 10. Got to get it to the 35-yard line. West under pressure, gets it away, and uh, things are still moving. Oh, big hit there at the end. Whoa, Might have called a fumble, but I think they're going to call it an incomplete pass. Yeah, incomplete pass. But it was a low, that's low snap once again. Uh, he's had problems with the snap a couple of times, and uh, that one just got that play off to a, to a rough start. They were in trouble from the beginning. Yeah, that play was going nowhere from the one, jump. One, just snap. Low snap, and here comes the pressure, and, yeah, he did, didn't have time to do a whole lot. Yeah, Lewis again in his, in his face. I think that perhaps discussing whether that was a forward pass, but I think he was able to get it away. And so they're going to get a personal foul. And the result is a first down. And must have been on sportsmanlike conduct panel there. I think wow. he gave the uh, – the first and sportsmanlike conduct penalty spiel there. So give 15 yards to Morehouse. They're now inside the 30-yard line of the 29. So well, I'll tell you, these uh, penalties are piling up for Clark Atlanta. Got a quarterback change. And now it's Jalen West into the game. So they go from Derek West to Jalen West. And Jalen's looking to throw. He's going for the end zone. Down the field for pride. He cannot hang on to it. I don't know if he would have been out of bounds or not. Good coverage by Zone What a pool. play to call for a quarterback who just checks into the game. And why don't we wind up and try to go for the end zone and see what <laughs> happens, huh? That's that's a big play to call. And look at the handful of jerseys we're not oh, calling wow. here. You see that? Yeah, I saw that one. Oh, my goodness. Well, apparently the officials did not, so they <laughs> second down as West still wow. in the ball game. There's a handful of jersey there, but here we go. Davis in the backfield with West. 5.46 left in the third. Four wideouts for the Maroon Tigers. This time they'll hand it off to Davis, and Davis tries to cut back inside. Lost his footing there. He's got to the 26. A pickup of three. And it's going to bring up he third that down. play just right and looked like he would wanted to accelerate and lost his footing right there. And goes down. He saw a little bit of an opening ahead. Got a little excited there, but unfortunately could not stay on his feet. Now it's going to be third and six. Got to get the ball down to the 19. So third and seven. Clock moving towards five minutes left in this third quarter. Each team with a touchdown in this third quarter. Morehouse touchdown run by Derek West. Got Locking. a whistle here now in the flags. And we've got a false start here coming up. So it's going to make it third and 11. Looking at the bottom of the screen at Derek West, looking like he may be checking back into the game here. Yeah, four is coming, four is going out, and I think five's coming back. And here comes your call here. Got a false start. You got a third and 11. So third and 12, I should say. Got to get to the 19-yard line. And Derek West now back into the game with Davis in the backfield. Four wideouts again for Morehouse. And now West looks to throw under pressure. He's taken down. 
Riding Lewis had him. Uh, sorry, that was 52 that time. Logan Daniels also there to clean it up. But in any event, that big sack's going to bring up a fourth down for Morehouse. And it uh, looks like might be a punt upcoming here for the Maroon Tigers. They know the one thing to do against Derek West is to really ramp up the pressure and come in. Don't give him a lot of time. And it seems like that's what Clark Atlanta has done whenever he's been called to the game. Has a bit of a high snap. Almost blocked. Almost blocked again. We've seen <laughs> we've seen oh, block oh. there. And uh, that one took a Morehouse uh, Clark Atlanta bounce before it being down near the 10-yard line with 3.53 left to play in this third quarter. So Clark Atlanta will get the ball back here and try to take the lead here in this 93rd edition of the battle for the AUC. The, the series record now, I guess it just depends on who you ask, but <laughs> Clark, Clark Atlanta, 51 wins for Clark Atlanta, 38 for Morehouse, and three ties coming into today. So that's uh, that's the series record, at least of course, <laughs> according to Clark Atlanta. We'll see if Morehouse might have something different. But they may have something different. They may have something it. different. but you know, uh, A lot of years in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of years in there. Here the Panthers back on offense right now, and they got Sharif Brown back. Kids in the backfield with him. They'll start this drive at the eight. And here's the handoff to Kinsey, and Kinsey finding some more room up front. Boy, that's some hard running now. You're not kidding. That takes it out to the 18. You're on line. That's hard running. He's, he's, he's collecting dark jerseys, and he's not slowing down. Here he is going right side. Look at the defense. One, two, three. Four. Hey, you know, they, they, you have to bring the kids to the sink. <laughs> They're trying to slow this guy down. That's some determined running. At 118 yards last week uh, against – 118 yards last week in the loss for Clark Atlanta to Benedict. So he's still running hard. 3-12 left to go. Can't see again. Again, breaks a – Broke a tackle there at the mesh point and then gets it to the 21. So first down for Clark Atlanta. And again, Kinsey really having a strong second half. Yeah. 28 Darian Pittman among those there to help make that stop. Also 93. We've been looking at him all game long. Elijah <laughs> Campbell. He has been so active up front for that Morehouse defensive unit. But the thing you have to like about Kinsey is you, the first guy that hits him seems like they can't bring him down. He gets that first contact and just finds that extra drive to get that extra yard. 2.30 and counting left here in the third quarter. First down for Clark Atlanta. Left side complete to Stevens. And right there away is Cameron Selders. He's had a busy day so far in the, in the defensive secondary for Morehouse. He really is. And he knows that, that Stevens is a reliable receiver. But he isn't giving him much room to get any yards after the catch. Uh, he's usually right there making the cover. Big game by that young man right there today. Got second down coming up with a short gain on the play out to the. We'll see where they have it here in just a moment. Under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. And back at the 21, so really no gain on that play. Another handoff for Kinsey. Kinsey breaks the tackle. Hunter can't bring him down. And now finally a couple more Tigers come across to the 27 yard line. So six yards on that one. It's going to bring up. Third and four for Clark Atlanta. First contact does not bring him down. And once again, you someone who shoots through, they're right there to get him before he makes his first step, and they cannot stop Kinsey. He keeps going. So six more yards for Kinsey. So third down. Clark Atlanta. Came into the game 42% on third downs. One minute left to go in the third quarter. And here's Brown. Steps up in the pocket. And he's still looking. Throws it over the middle. It's almost intercepted. Adrian Ly Lyman looked like he had a <laughs> looked like he was looking for a pick six there. But unfortunately could not hold on to the ball. But it will force a punt. Four o'clock in Atlanta. That was a dangerous throw over the middle by Brown. Yeah, I mean, Brown, though, he got away with one right there, too. I mean, he's moving. 
up to the pocket. He sees a, a, a receiver. He wants to throw, but what he didn't see <laughs> was <laughs> Arian Lyman, who was right there. Like you said, he could have taken that right back to the house. Uh, maybe he was even surprised. That ball hit him, <laughs> ball hit him right between the numbers. Worst place to hit uh, one of those defensive backs right in the hands. <laughs> Fourth down covered up for Clark Atlanta as, again, Morehouse holding on to that four-point lead. This defense has done the job for most of the game as this one uh, was touched by one of the Clark Atlanta players. I'm trying to think. Did they not get the punter that time? They may have run into the punter. They were trying to go for it and, yep, see. There's a flag on the play. I mean, maybe we got a replay and get a look at that and see if the punter really did get hit or you know, there's a lot of lot of movies being shot in Atlanta these days. <laughs> and uh, this young man may be a budding thespian. We'll, we'll have to see. Looks like it. Well, that was it was fourth and four. It was at the 27, so. Let's see. Here we go now. Running into the kicker. Yep. Okay. Wow. Let's, that's let's a take huge another look. Penalty. Take another look. Let's see if he really get hit. He's coming in there and. Yeah, he runs into him there. You give him that. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That was, <laughs> you know, that was kind of. E well, I would say easy one to call, but certainly did uh, by the letter of the law that was correct. You're not, you, you're not saying there's a little acting going on. There. You, <laughs> you're trying to be nice. You're trying to be nice. Well, you did and just not say, say a lot that. of films are, are on, made Mario, what, what, what you trying to say? What you trying to say over there? <laughs> Seeing that young man should call his agent. Well, you know, yeah. hey, you know. <laughs> I was looking for extras. I guess he could have played one. In any event, it does get Clark Atlanta first down, so that was a big play. There keeps the football Whoa, in the look, Panthers' hands. And, uh, got some movement up front. Mm -hmm. So they'll go back five. Yeah, it's 70. McCorvey moving there for Clark Atlanta. So we'll draw some ire there for that one. And it'll be first and 15 now he knows, for the Panthers. He's digging his head. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Man, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me. By game 10, <laughs> you commit a false start penalty. I get it, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kobe McCorvey, the junior from Mobile, Alabama, shaking his head. I, I know, I know. It's on <laughs> I me. I get it. It's on me. <laughs> Tyler Price in the backfield with Brown. Along with Kinsey as well. Three wideouts for the Panthers. First and 15, Brown down the middle, pass is incomplete. A little too hot there on that one. Tried to hit West again. A little bit too far out in front yeah, of West. Yeah. You, you, you want to do it so the receiver can catch it in stride, and he's laying out and still can't get that one. Yeah, three moon moon shirts right there in front of him <laughs> to greet him. Yep. If he had a caught in it. Brown getting the play now. Brown just trying to thread the needle there and put it in there and give give us team, team a chance to try to get the offense going again. Close game headed towards that fourth quarter. Another great battle between these two neighbors. And things really picked up here in the second half now. And really after the unfortunate injury to Kamara Carlisle, both. Offensive score touchdowns. This one going deep down the field. It's knocked away at the last moment. Jaden Downing is the man that knocked that one away. Sophomore from Fayetteville, Georgia. Nice defensive play. He throws the ball out there. And he's got two receivers. They're out there in the, in the vicinity. You wonder which one would end up making the catch. But he jumps up and makes that make that great, great defensive play. McCoy was down there west. Might have had a chance that off the ricochet had it come up the right way, but in the event, it's third and 10, or third and 15. 32 seconds left in this third quarter. Clark Atlanta trying to keep the ball going into the fourth quarter. Got to get the ball out to the 42 yard line. West over the middle. I'm sorry, that was Brown over the middle. And McCoy was the intended target. Simpson was right there on the coverage. And it's going to be fourth down. Clark Atlanta's got the punt again. You know, once again, and the Panthers having problems sustaining the drive and, and getting some things going back for offense. They had a period there early in this quarter mm -hmm. 
when things were moving, and now we're getting ready to go to the fourth quarter. It's important because the number of possessions is slowly shrinking. Shrinking, you only have, have so many chances and opportunities in this game. And as I said, this this matchup, this rivalry has a history of coming out of who gets the ball last. It's happened so many times right. uh, in in this series, and so we'll see. But right now, it's getting ready to go back over uh, to the Maroon Tigers. As this quarter is about to come to an end. Well, we're looking to punt here. Pride back deep for Morehouse. One of the better efforts. Oh, did that touch Pride? Oh, well, that's a th third time he's uh, put the ball on the ground, but he is able to hold on to that one. You got one thing to do. <laughs> you got one thing to do. It's catch the ball. You know, catch the ball. You make up your mind or you're going to catch it, get out of the way, and, 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 right. and let it bounce. You got one thing to do. And so uh, – my goodness, that, that was almost disaster for Morehouse there. He was able to pull it back in. So 15 seconds left in this third quarter, and obviously both offenses able to put a touchdown on the board in this third quarter. A pair of quarterback runs for touchdowns. And then as you go in the fourth quarter again, a tight ball game between these two teams. Of course, Morehouse trying to avoid a winless season. Clark Atlanta doesn't want to be that team that give Morehouse oh, that first one of the year. Not. Definitely so, not. So, <laughs> uh, looks like we got a good 15 minutes to go. Well, you know, in the final 15 seconds of this third quarter, Wes takes it, throws it on the run. It is incomplete. Ronnie Howard, the intended target. So, missed opportunity there. Yeah, 10 seconds left in the quarter. He knew he had his guy. He threw it maybe a little high for him, but he still felt like he could have, should have made a completion on that play. You were talking about kind of the difference the way the offense is, is started under West. You know, a little more run pass option, and he's been able to uh, escape the pocket and, and at least get some throws off. Unfortunately, he hasn't been able to connect very often. But you can see they added dimension. Mm hmm. West now going to go straight back and throw. Pass is caught by Pride, and Pride able to get across the 36 to the 36 as Harris makes another stop. So good to see him back on the field for Clark Atlanta. Yeah, nice completion there. I think that's going to be the last play we see of this quarter. I think we're going we're gonna to walk to the opposite end and get ready to play this fourth and final quarter of this game. Get ready, folks. Good. Final 15 minutes of the 93rd edition of the Battle of the AUC. Coming down to the wire once again. Morehouse, 14 to 10 on top of Clark Atlanta at the end of the third quarter.
SIC College Football presented by Georgia Power here on ESPN. Morehouse 14 to 10 on top of Clark Atlanta into the fourth quarter. And Morehouse has the football right now at the 36-yard line. Coming up on third and two. Big play here to start the fourth quarter. And the handoff goes to Davis. And Davis pushing the pile, trying to get to the first down. Looked like he got there. The 38-yard line. Once again, one official at the 39-yard line, but Davis does have enough for the first down. Yeah, and there's some determined running. Look at here. Gets in and takes on one defender. Keeps moving, keeps moving. My goodness. And that was against Terrence Harris. But the drive continues. Final 15 minutes of the season for Clark Atlanta and Morehouse. See who ends up on the high side by the time this one is over. Three wideouts for the Maroon Tigers. Send Keandre Turner in motion. And West over the middle. Pass is complete. And this is Pride to the 47 yard line. We'll give him eight yards on first down. And there you look, West, with a lot of confidence, just throwing the lead right in there. And Pride make that catch. And that's there for him when he wants to. He's showing you what he can do. If you just want to take the quick step back and throw it, if you want to roll him out to throw it, if you want to roll him out with the option, the option to run. When this guy's in the game, a lot of things are possible for the Morehouse offense. First, second down in a couple. Turn it back in motion. Davis in the backfield, and he will get the carry, cuts it back. It's near the first down, and well, the second effort may have got uh, back to the 47-yard line. You know, if he got that one, Rodney Lewis, 53, is yeah. there. <laughs> Make the stop. He's been very busy putting on some hits today. That's some great defensive plays in this game on both sides. Some great defensive players. Two defenses that – Totally haven't played well, but that's some great individual efforts. And as Davis has the first down into Clark Atlanta territory with the 45, is one else kind of working on the clock a little bit here. Here he is now. We're going to go to the right side, found the hole, and picks up the yards, moves the chains, got the football in the lead. Pick up of eight. So this hasn't been a lot of chunk plays, it's just been a lot of. Uh, Slow burns here for Morehouse, but like you said, they do have the lead, and they've got the football. The clock moving at 12.50 now left in the fourth quarter. On the 45-yard line. West off the fake, over the middle, pass is caught by Brunson. Brunson on the slant, gets it to the 31-yard line. Back-to-back -back first downs for the Maroon Tigers. Once again, once again, you're seeing what's possible with Derek West when he's in, in the football game, and he's had some time in now. When he came in, he was cold, and he right. ended up getting a touch. He's had a chance to get some things. With this drive seemed like he's very much in rhythm, very much in sync. They're not rolling him out a lot right now. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they bring that back into the equation. First down from the 31. Clark Atlanta's defense on his heels a little bit. Turn it back in motion. And this time they'll hand it off to Weems, and there's nothing doing that time. He'll lose a yard on the play. As Clark Atlanta defense able to slow things down, there's Rodney Lewis again. They call his name a lot so far, and they're still talking down there. Yeah, they are. They are having an interesting conversation. Maybe they're exchanging addresses for holiday time. Make sure you know how to get over and, <laughs> you know, bring the fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we won't eat it. But no, <laughs> no, we will. We will not. <laughs> we'll not eat it. Why is it the holidays one of them things always show up, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's like, you know, who 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 <laughs> takes the time to make that thing knowing that someone's going to eat it? In any event, second and 11. Williams still in the ball game. Brunson now goes in motion. And we come to the near side. And West looking to throw. Boy, comes Off a pressure. double move. Uh, this pass is going to be a duck. It's incomplete. Pride was open off that move down the sideline, but West just could not get another throw. But we do have a flag on the play. Play. Well, they they bring the pressure. They they do know to to do that to him. They turned it up. They dialed it up big time on that play. Daniels and Ivy were bearing down on West. Let's see what the flag is. Get to the thirty-two right now. Let's see which way the another. Call from the White Hat. Here we go. Let's 
So a tripping penalty against Morehouse. It'll knock him back 15 yards. And should be back at the 47 yard line. So. Well, that's tough. Then. Tough you, penalty you, there. When you're trying to get some momentum going, you, you got to drive. You had some good plays. You're trying to stack them all together in succession to get yourself down inside the red zone for a chance to hang some more points on the board. Then you have a play like that one. 11 20 left in this fourth quarter. Seen a little bit of everything in this football game. You have. And I uh, expect to see a little bit more <laughs> as this one climbs <laughs> down. Second down. And West looking to put it up. Sets up a screen for Davis, but that was going nowhere. I mean, might have lost a yard on the play. Boy, that was a high, high pass. Yes, it was. Davis had to go up there and get it, and Terrence Harris was just right there. That play lost the yard. So not exactly what you want right there on a play like that. No, no, so no. Down. And it maybe he threw the pass a little sooner than he wanted to. Mm -hmm. Once again, Clark Atlanta knows to bring the pressure, hurry him up. Uh, to make him get rid of it sooner than he wants to or sooner than everything is developed. And he hasn't played in the last four games, so the speed might still – he might still be trying to adjust to the speed even though he's you know, been able to make some plays in this football game. So get down to under 11 minutes left in this fourth quarter. A four-point lead for Morehouse. They're trying to hold on to it but right now, facing a long third down. West under more pressure. And can he get away? He cannot bake it at the end by Lewis. Man. Inside the 40-yard line. My goodness. Look at this. Just can't get away from that defender. Daniel's he, hanging on for dear he life. He holds on. <laughs> Say, I got you. You're not getting away from me. Somebody else come help me. <laughs> and he gets the takedown. That's a huge loss on the play of 12 yards. So, uh, this will I mean, be a punt coming up here for Morehouse. Clock Atlanta just – just ramps up that that uh, that, that intensive um, pressure on him when they know it's a passing situation and just try to make him uncomfortable. Here's his punt. Here's Baker, a little rugby style punt and another near fly. Actually, they said he did. They someone did get a hand on it, and so Morehouse uh, Clark Atlanta will get decent field position here with 9:35 left in the fourth quarter. Morehouse. Up 14 to 10 on Clark Atlanta, late here in Atlanta. Morehouse on top, 14-10 on Clark Atlanta. Final week before the SIAC Championship next week. 
Sharif Brown in the offense about to get back on. Off the play fake going deep, and Stevens was had a step on the defense, but they could not make the connection. It'll be second down for the Panthers. Yeah. Like Brown just threw that one over the wrong shoulder. He did the pump fake, and that got some separation, and that's what you want to do. All right. Next Saturday, ESPN3 will have coverage of the SIAC Championship presented by Cricket. A rare matchup, but a matchup between two really good teams, Tuskegee and undefeated Benedict. Should be a fantastic game down there at Charles Johnson Stadium in Columbia. Oh, it'll be a great time over in Columbia to decide the conference championship. And there's a handoff, I believe, to Weems. Oh, sorry, that was uh, Kinsey on the on the run. Got my team's mixed up there for a second. <laughs> oh, coming up with nine minutes left here in this fourth quarter, Sam, and obviously – you're going to have, uh, you know, a lot. Of, we still expect a lot to happen these last nine minutes of the football well, absolutely. game. Absolutely. Absolutely. From what we've seen, um, the, the, the way things picked up there in the third quarter compared to the first half in this game. Eight fifty left to go. Brown with the Kinsey in the backfield. Third and seven. Got to get to the 40. Brown, right side, complete. McCoy, easy first down across the 45 to the 46-yard line. That one good for 13 and the first down for Clark Atlanta. And that's just simply throwing out there and making the completion, your, your receiver, looking it in, getting the catch, and moving the chains. That's the thing that's been missing, just getting a consistent drive. Clark Atlanta looking for that this time to try to go down and get themselves in scoring position. Got a first down. Brown's been the hot hand. Of course, he started the game and then was taken out early with Daquan Vincent Nelson, and now he's back in there. And here's Kinsey. Kinsey, big hole right side, and a good, a huge tackle there by Xavier McKinney as Kinsey got to the 50-yard line. Otherwise, he would have still been running right now. Here's another look at him. Finds his hole and turns up the Jets, but, boy, he's just about to, to, to go into another gear. McKinney comes up with that solo stop. Well, you're 0-9. You're halfway home in the fourth quarter with a four-point lead. Clark Atlanta moving the football. A big possession here for the Morehouse defense. But Clark Atlanta right now facing second down. And Brown left side, and it is incomplete. Selders and Gertman were right there. Throwing it a traffic. Dangerous throw by Brown that time. Yep, throwing it out there, and they read it right. Talking about the defenders for Morehouse, uh, Cameron Selders right there, Gertman, and there's, there's it out there. Nobody's able to, to bring it in, <laughs> the deflection. So it's going to be third down, 7.23 left to play. The clock has stopped. And Morehouse, who has been game throughout the, the day, just the one touchdown allowed on the run by Brown. Of course, field goal by Lobo. Got to get to the 45. It's third and five. Brown looking to throw. Now steps up. Gets away from one tackler, but th that second tackler will get to him. Uh, Simpson stopped him there at the 49-yard line. Another big play for the Morehouse defense. And the defenders are there. He eludes a couple right there, one more there, but then Simpson comes up. He hangs on until help comes. And takes him down. Brown loses a yard that time, and they'll come over to the sideline. And it'll be a punt, so Clark Atlanta's defense will have to come up big again as Morehouse is going to get the football back. Lobo back to punt, and Pride is back deep for Morehouse. As this punt sky high, and Pride makes a fair catch. At the 15-yard line. Getting down to crunch time here in Atlanta. 6.32 to go in the quarter. 14 to 10 in favor of Morehouse.
Another reminder, next Saturday, the SIAC Football Championship presented by Cricket, the West Division champion Tuskegee, taking on the East Division champion Benedict. It's one of the great games of all of the season and all of HBCU football. Tiger on Tiger, battle of the big cats. Going to be rumbling over in Columbia next week. Championship Saturday for the Division Two HBCU conferences, the CIAA. Also playing that championship game next week, but it's a huge game there in Columbia, South Carolina. we got a great finish set up here. 6.32 to go in the fourth quarter, and Jalen West back in the lineup for Morehouse. And there's a couple more scores to pass along to you. Fort Valley State finished off a 31-21 win over Albany State, so Fort Valley State gets a huge win in the Fountain City Classic, and with uh, less than 30 seconds left. Miles and Tuskegee tied at 13. But Tuskegee right now has the ball in Miles' territory, probably setting up for a potential game-winning field goal. So Morehouse, also sort of Tuskegee, uh, trying to get one back there against Miles as they were down early in that football game. Yeah, Kamari, after seeing both of these offensive units have some success, things have been sputtering a little bit. Not saying that the, the defenses haven't tightened up as well here in this quarter. I don't know. Six minutes, handoff goes to Davis, but again, runs into some Panthers right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, so we've been getting some things done throughout the game up there for them. Javon Hunt, 94, in on the stop. There's a crowd. They haven't gone anywhere. Oh, They're no. hanging around. They want to see who gets who gets the win at the end of this one. Uh, of a lot of bragging rights here. No question about it. You know, <laughs> again, they literally won't hear the end of this for the next. You know, they get an extra hour as well. Yeah, as right. Long, in in, like in addition to time. that, right? So here's the end off to Davis, and he gets up to the 16-yard line. So uh, we always say it's a big third down when it's the fourth quarter, but certainly that's the case here once again here. Third and nine coming up for Morehouse. And so now what do you do? You got a third and long here. You're trying to get something sustained. You know what I'm feeling? I'm feeling something's going to happen with special teams. Mm. We saw it earlier in the game. Um, it just feels like, you know, that that, that could be the turn uh, right now. Um, but we'll see. It's one of those games where it just feels like it's still late. There's gonna, Like you were saying, there's going to be something late in this game that's going to turn this thing all the way around. So 5-15 and counting left in this Fourth quarter, Jalen West, the third quarterback today for Morehouse. Four wideouts, trying to draw Clark and Lynn off sides. They were trying to make it a closer third down, but now they want to talk about it. So a timeout taken here with 5.03 left to play in this fourth quarter. And certainly when you, you think about next week with the Tuskegee playing Benedict, how big that game is for, for those two teams because Tuskegee right now, is in the running also for the Division II playoffs. 14 to 10 is our score. As Clark Atlanta tries to make a big stop on third down.
a tight battle in the stands as well as the trend leaders from Clark Atlanta Warhouse. Trying to get the crowd fired up for the final five minutes of this one. A big third down coming up. And Derek West back in the lineup. 5.03 left to play in this fourth quarter on his third and nine for the Maroon Tigers. And West looking to throw, and he is sacked right away. And Clark Atlanta is going to get the football back. Rodney Lewis once again on the stop. Like he's shot out of a cannon. I mean, it's no time at all. It seems like uh, they, they dial up that defense, bring the pressure, and try to force Wes into some mistakes. And that time, they just take him down for the sack. Big defensive play for CAU. A nine-yard loss on the play. So Clark Atlanta's about to get the football back in a big defensive play. Uh, Preseason SIA, all SIAC performer. And now let's see if we go for the block. We talked about something special that may happen. Drum roll. <laughs> Here, we Here we go. Here we go. 420 and counting. Here's Baker in his end zone. A little rugby style punt. It's short. And the fair catch is made at the Morehouse 40 yard line by Jones. So Clark Atlanta for the third time today is going to get field position starting in Morehouse territory. We'll see, uh, actually the fourth time, so we'll see if they can capitalize on here this time. That fair catch is important. You, you know, you don't want to let that ball bounce and roll. You got good position, good field position for your offense to come back out onto the field now. So give a shout-out to, to Alvin Jones for standing in there, making that catch, and giving his team better field position to start this possession. With 4-11 to go, is big. A pressure-packed fair catch right there, and Miles and Tuskegee are headed to overtime. Miles blocked the 43-yard attempt. So we got some drama in Atlanta, some drama at Tuskegee. <laughs> a lot of things going on. On first down, it's Kinsey able to jump over a couple of defenders there. He gets inside the 35-yard line. And now as we wind down this game, Clark Atlanta trying to put together the game-winning drive. That Quan Kinsey just going through people over, <laughs> around, whatever he has to do, man. He's just picking up the yards today. Fantastic effort. So second down coming up. Can see in the backfield. Should be should be closer to another hundred yard day today. He's had a lot of short runs that have a forty two yard run earlier. But this time it'll be Brown to throw. Pass is completed. Stevens. Stevens trying to make a man miss. He gets down to the twenty two. That's a first down and a gain of twelve for the Panthers. And it's first down for Clark Atlanta. Yeah, Zachary Belton there with the stop on that play for Morehouse. Watch him just take it. And just throw it out there. Night catch, but then the yards after the catch. Nice as well. Another big play for the Clark Atlanta offense. Stevens just couldn't get out of that tackle by Belton. And now clock moving at three minutes. You got to wonder. You know, start wondering who's going to be using some timeouts here to p perhaps preserve some time. Just well, in you, case Clark Atlanta scores. So you got to get six now. Three doesn't do anything for you. Knocking on the door of the red zone. Here's Brown. Brown steps up. He's going to run for it. And still <laughs> still moving. Got some help from a couple of his linemen. He takes it down to the 17-yard line. And pick up a five when it looked like he was going to be wrapped up for a short gain. Watch Brown with the run here. And watch for 72 at the end. Nicholas Solomons. He was coming in. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Urban and Hunter on the stop. And a timeout was taken there with 2.33 left to go. In this fourth quarter, so Morehouse on top of Clark Atlanta, 14 to 10. We'll take a break here and come back for the final 2.30 here in Atlanta.
we talked about the injuries for Morehouse, and there goes another one here. It's Tyler Hunter, big defensive end. Now I have to come over to the sideline. Final 233, and uh, he's being helped off the field right there. So it's a big loss for the Morehouse defense. Obviously, he wants to come up. He's one of the veterans, a senior out of Memphis, Whitehaven High School, and you know, him and the guys are coming out to help him get off the field. He, he, he you know, and, and you know what? He could get some help whenever he wants to walk off the field. He, he yeah. wants to do that and try to give some some courage and and, and to his teammates. Uh, but everyone ex experienced. There's Coach Rich Freeman going out there. Um, and uh, he said, you know, he, he he wants he wants to show he can that he can do it himself. But this has been a tough game. Mm -hmm. His team's leading, uh, and he knows his team needs him right uh, right now. And then with two thirty three to go in the ball game, he's not going to be able to finish this game. So I hope he'll be all right. This has got to be a bad feeling for him as uh, the clock now back running, two twenty five. So there was no timeout. It was just. Uh, delay for the injury as Brown on the move again inside the five touchdown. Clark Atlanta takes the lead. Sharif Brown, his second rushing touchdown of the day, and it's time to dance, but there's still a lot of time left in this football game. There's time left. There's 2.15 to go, <laughs> but I tell you, he's have some other turns. Brown just stops for a minute, sees the surveys the field, and finds an opening and takes it in for the score. 17 yards, his second rushing touchdown. Had an 11-yard score earlier to pull Clark Atlanta will then forward for Morehouse. Now with 2.15 left. And now you're going to be down. At least a field goal would tie it up uh, with this, if this extra point goes through by Lobo. And it does. So Clark Atlanta now 17-14 to 14 on top of Morehouse. And now it's going to be the Morehouse offense that will try to at least tie it up or perhaps take the lead here late in this fourth you quarter. Find the momentum. The pendulum swings back and forth. And Morehouse had it for a time, had the lead. Now Clark Atlanta has it, but there is still time remaining, and they're going to get the foot football back. We'll see what they're going to do. We've seen the versatility of the Morehouse offense uh, when they have number five on the field, when they have uh, Derek West. He allows them to do something. But the fans know it. They can feel it. Now the Clark Atlanta crew, they're all up on their feet. They're excited because their team has the lead. Can their defense go out there now and, and, and keep Morehouse in check for 215 and give them that O to go with that 10 uh, on their schedule? And, that, that, and that's, what, that's what's at stake. It's come right. down to two, two minutes and 15 seconds uh, for the bragging rights and to seal a winless uh, season for more. My goodness. Um, and, and, you know, even though this team is not going to mm -hmm. the uh, the postseason, they would finish it four and six and we'd say, you know what? You know what we did? You know, we, we sealed those guys having a winless season across the street. <laughs> 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 and they'll be able to brag about it for a long time. Yeah, they will, but it's not over yet. So uh, here's the kick. This one going towards the sideline. And old Pride could have let that one go out of bounds, but he catches at the five. Makes a man miss. Watch out. Pride has room out of the outside. He's across the 25. Has one man left. It's a kicker. He's being blocked across midfield. And out of bounds inside of Clark Atlanta territory. A big special teams play by Marquise Pride, one of the top kick returners in all of the SIAC. I'm with you. I thought he was going to let that bounce and go out of bounds right there, but he saves it. And here he is, brings it back across the field, gets some blocks and weaves his way, gets another block out there. And Man, what a great return. Great field position for the Tigers to start this uh, possession. 2-0-2 to go in the game. Like we said, late in this game, things happen. Don't know why, can't explain it, but it seems to always have something happen, some, some high drama late at the finish of this game. 2-0-2 left in all three timeouts. And pride getting the accolades from his teammates. That was a huge play. He's had a rough day at times, but he has come through big in the second half. Yeah, he's coughed it up a couple of times, and that, 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 and that wasn't good. But he's, he's working hard to make up <laughs> to atone for that. Well, but Morehouse goes down to score, and they'll forget all about that. Davis going out in motion. And here's West going to the middle. Pass is caught. That is Howard out to the 37-yard line. Clock continues to move, but 150 left to go. So coming down to the wire here in Atlanta. Yep, that time West just took his time, didn't rush, saw an open guy, and got the ball to him. Well, good for six, so it's second and four. West on the roll, gets it away. The pass is caught, and getting away is is, is Corda, and Corda gets it down to the 23-yard line. So in two plays, Morehouse knocking on the door of the red zone. 
Great play that time. They roll Wes out. He looked and found it and found his receiver. And go ahead and take another look at it here. Rod this time got a good block. Was able to get the pass out there. Nice catch and some yards after the catch. 120 to go. West looking. Steps up. Gets away. Has room to run. Inside the 20 to the 15. Then gets a block from Pride. Going for the goal line. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. Derek West trying to do everything he can in his return back to the Morehouse lineup. And here he is. Right in the block here. Picks up another one. Thought he's going to be able to take it all the way, but he's knocked out right there at around the two, two and a half yard line. That one good for 21 yards with 110 left to go here in this fourth quarter. And now Morehouse, 0-9, coming into the day. Trying to win its third straight over Clark Atlanta. Clark Atlanta trying to get to four and six. Clock continues to move. We're coming up on 104. Looks like a timeout may have been called here. Meanwhile, at Tuskegee. What has happened there? We've got a uh, tie at 20. They're going to the second overtime. Tuskegee scored their fir the first offensive possession. And then uh, Jacob Milhouse just scored in for one yard out for Miles. So we've got a game going to the second overtime between Miles and Tuskegee. And uh, this one coming down to the final 110 at least here in Atlanta. But uh, Morehouse wants to put this thing in the end zone. Yeah, they do. They do. They they, they don't want to have to sell for a field goal here. They got a minute 10. They want to come up with some good plays. First of all, no turnovers. Take care of the football, but they want to find a way to get into the end zone. So 110 left and the ball at the two-yard line. Davis looking for the goal line. He stopped momentarily. Can he push it? Now they're going to stop him at the one inside the one-yard line. Well, he got up ahead of steam, but those white jerseys just got a wall right there and, and turned him back. It's another look. He tries to accelerate. Boy, there are a lot of white jerseys right in there, and they just wrap him up, won't let him get through. 45 seconds and counting. And now the clock has stopped, and I think there's going to be a timeout called by Clark Atlanta. So they'll be now to two timeouts left. 40, 46 seconds left to play here, the full quarter. And things started to pick up a little bit in that third quarter. Kind of kind of got sputtered a little bit. And now late in the fourth quarter, now we once again see things picking up back up. This game has pulled every emotion. Yes. It, it's tugged at your heartstring. You, you look, we come on at the beginning. We talk about what this game means, you know, for two teams who've had their struggles this season to get the win. And the game starts out and they both sputter some on, on, on offense. We saw things get a little chippy er, er, early in the game. And then they settled down and played some football. Second half, they come out, and Morehouse is looking to move, and Kamar Carlisle, you know, goes down with that injury. Mm -hmm. uh, the play is halted for a, a long, seemed like forever, mm -hmm. uh, for him to come out. And you wondered how the teams would come out of it. They came out of it, and the offenses got going. You know, you made a quarterback change for Morehouse. You got the guy that we thought we were going to see early in the game. We got the experience of, of Derek West. Even when things were going bad, they went good for him. Bad snaps, turning right. the wrong way, still made him pay off. <laughs> right. so, so we've seen a little bit of everything in this game today. We've seen special teams score. We've seen brilliant defensive plays, uh, takeaways in, 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 in this game. But here we are now with 46 seconds to play. Morehouse with a chance to score. And the thing of it is, if they score right now, there's some time. Right. Even if Clark Atlanta gets the ball back, back to, you know, to come back the other way. But let's see what Morehouse can do and if they can get into the end zone. So they reset the clock at 47 seconds. 17 to 14 is the score. Morehouse looking to take the lead. Davis again, right side. And kind of let him score right there. Oh, no. Got, I think we got whistles first. We got whistles? Something happened there. Davis just walked into the end zone. I don't know if Clark Atlanta was going to just let him score right there so they get the ball back. So they back. get the ball back. But that, that happens. Let's see what happened here. Okay, so they weren't ready to, for play. I don't think there's going to be a penalty. They just weren't ready. The whistle hadn't blown to start their play. He says, whistle's on me. With, on, when I blow the whistle, then you can go. Now, did you do that same play? Yeah, you, know, you might go back to that. You know, we'll, we'll see what Clark, Clark Atlanta does this, but. And it's Davis. He goes the other way. He's in. He goes the other way. He goes the other way. Morehouse with the lead. Look at this. <laughs> Well, they haven't had the lead late in games a lot this year. They've got it now. Forty-three seconds to go. Davis with the with the touchdown run. 
And the and the Tigers regain the lead late in Atlanta. Late got 43 seconds to play, but Morehouse back up top. Out of all the things that's gone on today, you said you don't have a lot of practice with them having late game offensive surges like they're never going to go to Morehouse, guy. <laughs> they're like, hey, hey, you know, that's, that's, that's what we do. We're going to win this for the day. We still got 43 seconds left. Oh, boy. It's not over. You're not kidding. We've seen some <laughs> crazy last-minute uh, situations. There was a high school game in Alabama yesterday. A team scored two touchdowns in two seconds. Now, it didn't affect the <laughs> outcome of the game. But the final two seconds, they oh scored goodness. two touchdowns. How did that happen? Well, so you had a uh, – you had a, a they were trying to run the clock out. The kid actually ended up running a 79-yard touchdown, as we see. Baker ready to kick this extra point. Snap was low. low that kick was blocked. blocked. And let's see. Well, it doesn't matter because it's dead there. So Morehouse will have a three-point lead. So Clark Atlanta only needs a field goal to tie field it up. Goal. So anyway, on the last play of the game, they fumbled the, the kid fumbled the, the ball, and they ran it. And the other team ran it in for a touchdown. So he had two touchdowns. The final two seconds, they end up having. They had to kick it off because it was it was the final two seconds of the game. Right. And uh, the final score ended up being fifty-four to seven. But I, I guess because it was a playoff game, they had to. Uh, they had to play it out, but so just the point is, there's still plenty oh, yeah. of time left still in this football now. game. There's still time. That is that is that is for sure. And his name was Big Million Dollar Smile there on his face because he <laughs> just gave his team the lead. It has been a rough season for the Maroon Tigers. Yeah, he'd be the big man on campus at night, but we got 43 <laughs> seconds to play, right? 43 seconds away. He'd be a popular guy from putting that one in the win column and. Clark Atlanta still. Some of those, uh, some of those uh, nice Morehouse alums. <laughs> yes, exactly. Will come and take, him, take, him, take that young man out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Tuskegee now, Miles kicked the field goal to start the second overtime. So Tuskegee now will have a chance to, uh, to, to drive. So right now, Miles ahead 23 to 20. So. Yep. All right. 20 to 17, 43 seconds left here in this fourth quarter. And Sam, of course, obviously, if you're a Clark Atlanta, uh, now you're going to have to really get some chunk plays, get the ball down the field, and perhaps put yourself in position for a game time field goal. Or you might have to go all the way to the end zone here on this possession. Yeah, you're going to see just how far you can get. That point, I don't know about the short kick here. You know, you, you, you to me, you help out a little bit with the position, but we'll see. That's just, let's see if that, that strategy goes. I, 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 think, I think you kick it deep. You know, but we kicked it and we aimed it, and now they got the ball up there on 35. Um, you know, you're trying to get into field goal range. Right. You don't have to get the touchdown because right. you blocked the extra point attempt. Yes. So there are a lot of different possibilities as as the Panthers come back out onto the field. Not a lot of time, no. uh, but they do have hope. They got the ball, and let's see what they're able to pull off here. So a couple of timeouts left for Clark Atlanta. Devin Newsom was the man that – that caught the ball for Clark and Landon, took it out to the 35, so 65 yards away. Of course, could also be going for a field goal. Here's Brown on first down, and he's taken down to the 41-yard line. They're going to have to call a timeout here. Yep, yep, yep. Caleb, Caleb Grant right there at the bottom. Uh, he lose a couple of defenders, and Caleb Grant, 42, and comes in with the shoestring stop. Good play by Grant at the 31-yard line, and Morehouse – Three plays away from putting that one in the win column that it's been a, a rough season, but anytime you play your rival, it feel, and especially when you have a season like this, it feels like that's the most important game of the season. And, and Morehouse has played like that today, and certainly Clark Atlanta has, has played like a team that has, uh, has not wanted to, of course, give Morehouse his first one of the seasons. We've had a, 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 a back-and-forth game, chippy game early on, and then, of course, uh, the offense has started to pick it up in the second half. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we still got 32 seconds to play. You do you want to chunk it? You want to just throw it out there and see what happens? Either catch or penalty. Uh, but you got to get it. You know, you got to give your quarterback time and your receivers time to work their way downfield to throw it out there. Let's see what happens here on this second down. 32 seconds on the clock. Here's Brown, straight back, steps up, escapes the pocket. Stops and goes deep down the field. Two men down there. It's knocked down. Incomplete with 22 seconds on the clock. Yeah, and Brown took a shot just as he was relieved, as he was releasing that one. He knew it was about to get hit. You know, rolls out there. 
Here comes the hit. He gets a knockdown, but throws it out there. And there are four defenders and well, two defenders and there are four guys. There are four, four, four end up down on the it. ground, right? And so third down. But that's what you're gonna have to do. You're mm -hmm. gonna have to find a matchup like they can throw it out, hoping it bounces off somebody or deflect it, and you, and you make a catch, and, and just like that, you're at least in field goal range. Both teams have had success over the middle today. Let's see if they can go back to that. So it's third down from the 31. Brown again, deep over the middle, too high. Had a man open, Hinton just too high for him, and now it's fourth down, final play. They hurt you. <laughs> they hurt you. Hey, you had like some success over the middle, and then, you know, yes. well, look, well, there it is. There you go, Mari, thanks a lot. <laughs> You're going to send you a headset. <laughs> you can take a call to call the plays, man. Well, good. I, I'm exactly where I need to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final play here, 17 seconds left, and uh, this is it for Clark Atlanta. They don't get this first down. It is going to do it. Morehouse 0-9 on the season. Clark Atlanta trying to keep this, keep the game alive. One more play for the Morehouse defense. Here's Brown. Left side. It is caught at the 48-yard line. That's going to be a first down. What a play. And uh, through the shadows, through the, the sunlight. The sunlight that has come out because it's <laughs> kind of got a gloomy overcast day for much of the day. And here we are you know, late in the game. And the sun has appeared. I didn't see. I didn't, we didn't even see who caught it. Might have been Stevens because he's made a lot of catches today. But in any event, whoever caught it got to the 48-yard line with 11 seconds left to go. So still time left for Clark Atlanta. Brown can't take a sack. Gets it over the middle. Pass is caught. That's McCoy. McCoy inside the 30, down the sideline, out of bounds at the 25 with two seconds remaining. So Clark Atlanta will have an, uh, a decision to make. They go for the game time field goal. Or they try to win it. Into the end zone with a hail mary, a uh, hail mary attempt in the end zone. And let's see what they're going to decide to do. I mean, we had trouble with with uh, with field goal attempts earlier in the game. Do you go back and get one to try now? Try to force overtime. What does Coach Slater want to see from his team? Well, let's find out what they decide to do here. Twenty to seventeen. This is going to be a forty-one yard attempt. Coach Freeman's going to use a timeout for Morehouse, give him some time to think about it. Now, who's kicking this one? Because uh, that's a good question. Two. I'm seeing 40. Uh, looks like it's going to be Lobo. Yeah, Fernando Lobo. He did hit from 21. Uh, he did hit earlier from 21 yards, and uh, we've also seen some rain has come out. So we've got sun on one side, and now the rain has come out. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> what else are we going to see in this game? <laughs> what else? Look at look at this. That's pretty good rain that's falling yeah, there right is. now. Oh, my goodness. You we've, know, seen, like you, I said, we've seen a little bit of everything and still have right, more right to see. Right behind the Morehouse bench, you got some fans who come out of the stands to get right behind the team. <laughs> look at this. The, the officials are drenched. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. What a time for this rain to show up. Well, you couldn't have written a movie script better than this with, <laughs> with the rain coming in at the end. <laughs> Again. <laughs> So, Fernando Lobo hit from 21 earlier. This one from 41 yards. Boy, look at that rain. This could tie the game. Heavens to Jim Cantori. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie West will hold it. This is for the tie to send us to overtime. West is ready. And he dropped the snap. Now, West has to pick it up. And he's going to run with it. He's got room to run inside the 20. He lost the football. And it's recovered by Morehouse and the Maroon Tigers. <laughs> get their first win of the season on the final play of the season for the Maroon Tigers, 20-17 to in the final. What a finish. <laughs> I told you. I told you. Strange things happen at the end of this game throughout the series. And sure enough, here it is. <laughs> a power play of the game presented <laughs> – as we, as Dante Simpson comes out with the football, but here's the play the, that gave Morehouse the final lead. Ernest Davis, the one-yard touchdown run, and the Morehouse Maroon Tigers. It's been a rough year for Rich Freeman, but it will not end winless. As the Morehouse Maroon Tigers take it 20-17 to in a wild celebration. 
for the Morehouse students and the, the fans. The students from they Morehouse are, they are loving life right I'm now. I'm seeing umbrellas are coming out, the rain <laughs> falling down, and, and just the way this game is ended, remarkable, remarkable game. Another chapter, another chapter uh, written in the history of this great series. And, boy, Tuskegee did get the win over Miles. So just as this game ended, the Tuskegee game ended with a touchdown by Dante Edwards against his former team. One more time, thank you so much for joining us, 20 to 17, the final. And don't forget to join us next Saturday for the SIC Football Championship presented by Cricket. The Tuskegee Golden Tigers will try to keep the winning game going, going against the undefeated Benedict Tigers. What a finish to the regular season in the SIAC. 20 to 17 is our final score for Sam Crenshaw. I'm, Kam I'm Kamari Darrington saying so long from Atlanta. This has been a